and filing a false restraining order. Court come to order, all rise. Judy enters. Be seated, please. Hello, Judge. Hi. Case number 204, Bernero versus Trinnell. Thank you, Kevin. Now, you have to tell me, are you Miss or Mr.? For the duration of this case, I will refer to as Mr. for legal terms. Mr. Trinnell. Correct. Okay. Ms. Bumel, you and the defendant dated for how long? Two years. And according to what I read, during part of that period of time, you lived at your mom's house. Yes. From when to when? From January to May. Of what year? 2021. Had you lived with each other prior to that? Yes. Where? At his mom's. And how long had you lived at his mom's? About a year, once I turned 18. Prior to your moving into his mom's, were you ever together? Yes. Where? Well, we didn't live together. We were just, like, we were seeing each other, I mean. From when to when? From April to December of 2019. And then I moved in at the beginning of 2020. So for a long time. Did you have plans to marry and... Yes. ...that you discussed it? Yes. True? We had those conversations, yeah. Great. This case actually has to do with funds that you put in to a car that was supposed to be used by both of you, but since you didn't have a license, the car was put in your name. And the relationship took a bad turn, and you have the car. Is that right? Yes. And you, Ms. Pimel, want the money that you put into the car. Yes, we agreed that I would get my half of the money if he kept the car. Well, you didn't put in half the money. You only put in, according to you, a deposit. Yes. So you're not entitled to half the car. At most, you're entitled to your deposit back, and that's what I have to determine. Now, Mr. Trunell, the allegation is that you filed a false restraining order against the defendant, and I believe you spent a little time in custody. Is that correct? Yes, they took me in and fingerprinted me. And that was after the breakup? Yes. All right, so let's go to the car. You were living with your mother when the car was purchased? Yes. Okay. Mr. Trunell, month and year the car was purchased? May of 2021. So that was immediately prior to the breakup? Yes. What kind of car was purchased? 2014 Ford Focus SE. And the purchase price? We put down a deposit of 7000 Total purchase of the car was just under 11000 So that was finance yes. charge yes. on the car. Who financed the car? I did. Through what institution? My bank account. I was paying it, with it through my debit card while I was working. I understand that, but what institution? What bank of America. Credit, bank of America. And what were the monthly payments? $200 around there. So if the car was purchased um, immediately prior to the breakup, the plaintiff really didn't get any benefit or use of the car. Very little, maybe at most 30 days. Would that be a fair statement? I'd say so. Fair statement? Yes. And how much, Ms. Buhlman, did you put into the car? I put in 6000 Is that correct? Correct. I'd like to see proof that you put in 6000 Hannah produces a document, then hands it to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. Thank you. She reviews it. And then I also have bank statements. Sarah, would you do me a favor? Just add up these figures for me, please. Sure. I'd, I'd like to see the bank statement. Hannah hands another document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. There's one page that is not highlighted. Totals to 7,000, Your Honor. What is this that you gave me? My bank statements for what I paid at CarMax and then what I take out, I do because I did a cash deposit. So everything I took out at the ATM, I put right in the, my cash envelope I had for savings for the car. But there are two CarMax transactions. I did it in cash because I was told that it would be cheaper if I did it in cash because it won't be taxed if it was uh, compared to a card. Yeah, but these figures don't add up to the same thing as that. Well, he did pay a little, because that is 7000 No, no, no. But these figures I have on the 13th of May, which is when this car was purchased. I have you took out $800. You took out 1520 You took out another $100. Yes. I may be missing something, but that's all I see. No, and then, the, like I said, the ATM on the other two bank statements, it says 700 800 and I believe in our 500 for everything I took out in cash for down deposit. I'm not following that. Are you understanding this? Take a look at this. Sure. Um, you know. So she's saying that these PNC bank statements was cash withdrawals yeah. that she then used towards, I'm assuming, this large uh, $5,380 first bill because the totals from this are only totaled to $2420. Right. Well, that's all I have. 
pat your back, say, this thing that you handed me first is actually unreliable because my 14-year-old child could make that up on a computer. I'm looking at your bank statement, which looks different from my bank statements, but I'm prepared to accept it. Do you have the invoice for the car that you purchased? I have the contract, the bill of sale. Contract. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see it. Ryan hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. She reviews it. And I'd like to see your bank statement, please. I don't have bank statements with me. Any reason? Um, in my search, there were no correlations on May 13th towards the purchase. Only records that came up were towards the insurance and car payments that followed after the date. So I did not believe it was reasonable for me to submit that as evidence. In the future, you should let the fact finder determine whether it's reasonable or not, right? Yes, right. OK. Now, when you finance the car, what this requires you to do is to maintain insurance. Yes. And it requires you to maintain insurance for both liability and collision until the rest of the, the remainder of the loan is paid off. Yes. Did you? Yes. Good. Now, without going into anything else, the two of you are no longer together. We may have to get into that later on the protective order. But the car was totaled. Yes. After the breakup. Yes. And the car was totaled and insured so that there was payment by the insurance company. Yes. How much? 6000 Do you have any proof of that? No. Now, when you received the $6,000, the balance of your loan was $7,000. When was the car totaled? September 29th of 2021. So you had the car for a few months and made a few payments? Yes. Okay. Well, this looks to me as if she put down most of the down payment. Yes and that at most you paid registration, tags, and a couple of car payments, which didn't total $6,000. Correct. Well, why didn't you give her the rest of the money? The... Are you following me? I mean, that doesn't seem like rocket science. It wasn't your money. The two of you broke up, and it's clear to me that you had a minimal investment in this dollar-wise. The reason I didn't was mainly because I was the only person that could hold on to the car and keep it legally because it was under my insurance. Okay. I was able to finance it from there. Okay. Well, what you should have said to me was, I got a check for $6,000, but the $6,000, didn't that have to go to Bank of America? Yes, it did. It went to Bank of America, went to my account. I used it towards paying off medical bills from the accident, and I used it towards rent for my home. Well, why didn't you use it towards paying off the car loan? The insurance company had paid off the rest of what I was owed to pay on the car to CarMax. They paid it off. Oh, so they the paid end. it off, plus they gave you $6,000. No, let me correct. I apologize. I'm very nervous. The insurance company after the incident, had paid off the rest of what was owed to CarMax from me. Okay, so the insurance company paid off to the lender... Yes. ...which was left, which was, let's say, $6,000. Yes. And in addition to that, they sent you a check. Yes, I used that check towards my bills, and I used it towards my rent. Okay, well, that you can't do, because that really wasn't your money. You didn't spend that money. Didn't you feel as if it was appropriate to give it back to her? I would have if I wasn't in the situation that I was. And what I, situation were you? I was injured. Who after... is this? Is this your mother? Yes. Okay. Are you living with your mom? Yes. Okay. Well, so you weren't on the street. I assume that you feed your child when you have to. He was actually taking care of me at that time. Um... Oh, great. Well, if you had the money to take care of your mother, then you should have returned the money to her. So she's entitled to that money. You were compensated for it by the insurance company, and you had no right to keep it for your own bills. Okay. Got it? Yes. Easy. <laughs> Easy peasy. Now, next is your allegation that he assaulted you and filed a false restraining order. Yes. Okay. So now you, let's jump to you are no longer living together. This is after May of 2021. You had an encounter, according to your papers, with the defendant. Tell me when and where that happened. So October 6th um, at a Gloucester City Park, right down the street from where I was staying, so I walked there. And we both agreed for me to pick up my things because he still had some of my belongings. Did you make the appointment to meet by text, by email? Yes. Text? Yes. Anybody have those texts? Um, let me see if I do. I do not. My phone was destroyed. I only have the text from when he texted me the car accident when I said I was planning to take my car back. And right after that, I then planned to meet up with him to get the rest of my stuff back. Okay. Well, you don't have the text no, involving that. Okay. So you did, in fact, meet at a park. Yes. How did you get there? I walked there. I was staying at a friend's house. How did you get there? I drove my mother's car. Okay. 
Now you're in the park. Tell me what happened, and this is in October. Yes. Go ahead. So we meet at the park, and he gives me my belongings, and then I asked him because throughout the breakup and afterwards, I knew there were some things he was hiding from me, so I asked him if he was hiding anything and to get some closure. I just wanted the truth. And so from then, he was getting a little frustrated about it, and I was just saying, I don't know what I did wrong, and then he threatened to hit me, and then I said... You said to him, I don't know what I did wrong. Yes. Because he moved out. Well, from the reason he told me we broke up, he said it was mental illness. And then I felt like I wasn't helping if I could do any more. I felt like I could have done more because I was very accepting of who he is now. And so since that happened and I was so accepting of him, then he threatened to hit me. And I, I was very confused. And I just said, OK. And, and then he shoved and swung at me. And at no time did you hit him? After that, I did defend myself and I did hit him. What did you hit him uh, with? Just my hands. I, I pushed him uh, just to get him off of me. Was he injured? By scratches, yes. Where? On the face. There was like two scratches I saw. And what about you? I had bruises on my shoulders, both shoulders, and then I had a swelling on my head. Either of you have photographs of the injuries? I do. I'd like to take a look at them. I told her that you need to understand that you did me wrong too. She said, so what? I pushed her. She swung first. I swung back. We fought. She punched me in the face twice. So after you pushed her, according to you, she swung at you. Correct. Okay, well, you didn't expect her to give you a kiss after you pushed her. Did he discuss with you a co-ownership of the dog, which would mean that you would share the litters if the dog was bred? Yeah, he did. And you gave him no part of the $3,500? No. So, do you want to tell me what your defense is to this? Because your counterclaim is ridiculous. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Hannah and Ryan. 20-year-old Hannah Buhlman says ex-boyfriend Ryan Trunell is responsible for a car down payment and injuries from an assault. Ryan said he was the one assaulted. Either of you have photographs of the injuries? I do. I'd like to take a look at them. Kevin collects photos from Hannah and Ryan. Thank you. He brings them to Judy, who reviews them. One of them depicts Ryan displaying a small injury to his mouth. How did it end, the incidents in the park? So I just pushed him on the ground and I walked away. And where did you go? I first went back to his house. I did go to his house because he still had one of my big bags. OK, so after this incident, you pushed him down. You went back to his house with him? No, I, I, with my friend. Well, your friend wasn't with you in the park. Yes, I walked to my friend's house. I let him know what happened. And then we drove to his house so I can get the rest of my belongings that I couldn't carry home. And what happened when you got to his house? So I told him, I said, hey, I'm sorry. I even put my hands up. And I'm like, I just want the rest of my belongings back because I didn't think I would get it back. And so then he just told me, sorry, I told you I was mentally unstable. And I'm like, I just want my stuff back. And I grabbed it and I left. So you got your things back? Yeah. And you both said, I'm sorry. Does that sound correct? No. Well, tell me your version of you had this argument in the park. We had an argument in the park. She was asking me questions about why the relationship had ended. I had explained that it was through emotional turmoil, mental illness, and that she was not being very supportive. She was very toxic, and she was very aggressive with me. And when I had told her that I was going through all of this stuff and that I felt bad for things that happened in the relationship, I told her that you need to understand that you did me wrong, too. She said, so what? I pushed her. She swung first. I swung back. We fought. We broke up the fight in the beginning. I apologized. Her items were on the ground. I picked them up. I handed them to her. She punched me in the face twice, post that, grabbed my hair, pulled it, and then we broke up the fight after. I got in my car. I went home first. She went back across the street to her friend's place. I was at the apartment. I was just talking to my landlords about some stuff that my mother and I had to take care of. I don't exactly remember. As I was coming back up from the apartment, her and her friend had walked up, threatened to charge me with assault, and demanded the $7,000 for the car then and there. I said I didn't have it. I apologized for what had happened. Didn't have it. You apologized for spending the money? Yeah. That's what part of the argument was about, at back at your apartment. Well, there wasn't an argument on that. I, I apologized for it, but she still wanted the money. She demanded the money. Well, so the money was part of the argument. Yes. Did you both go to the police station? Yes. Yes. And who went first? I did. But you didn't go to the police station immediately after the incident. You went to the police station after she said she's going to charge you with assault. Yes. And do you have a copy with you of the police report that you filed? Yes, I do. Ryan hands a document to Kevin. Thank you. He brings it to Judy, who reviews it. 
You have a copy of the police report you filed. I do not. You do not. Okay. So you were not injured. And what I'm putting together here is that you went to the police station and filed this because she had threatened to go to the police and charge you with assault. You went there, got there first. And you got there second, is that right? And by the time you got there, is that the time they took you into custody? Yes. Okay. Did you ever, Mr. Trunell, seek medical attention for any of these injuries that I see in these photographs? No. The answer is either yes or no. No. And you do acknowledge, Mr. Trunell, that the initial aggressor, physical aggressor, which is what you testified to. I, let's go back to his initial testimony, Whitney. I believe he testified that, I'm not sure she was aggressive, she was loud, she wouldn't accept it, and he pushed her. But I'd like to get the exact wording. So I told her that you need to understand that you did me wrong too. She said, so what? I pushed her. She swung first. I swung back. We fought. Okay, so after you pushed her, after you put your hands on her, according to you, she swung at you. Correct. Okay, well, you didn't expect her to give you a kiss after you pushed her. No. All right, Ms. Buhlman, I really am looking at your complaint, and your complaint is seeking $6,000 in damages. Well, you already have, according to you, that money invested in the car, which he got back. So you are entitled to that. And since that's the extent of your claim against the defendant, I'm granting your petition in the amount of $6,000. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished here. Thank you. Thank you. This court is adjourned. There are a lot of factors going on, I believe, just between both of us. I'm just more than grateful to finally get this over with. I've been waiting too long. and Just a lot, I think, that I had to work on, too. Fighting for it and put so much work and time into it. A lot of the things that were going on in my head was me being depressed, having to deal with a lot of what was going on in the world at the same time, too. Well, he was, like trying on makeup and stuff when we were together and I was showing him how to do makeup and I was being very supportive and just telling him, you know, you should get help, go get a therapist. I felt like she was pushing me away. And I don't know why he fought the other way around because... That we just both go our separate ways and we both just try and be happy and... I didn't know what to do and what I was doing I thought was supportive. Sarah and Judy. That must have been a very difficult breakup for both of them after being together for significant number of years, but that's tip number one of Judy Justice is never put your hands on someone. And tip number two, never purchase property, dogs, cars, timeshares with yes. someone who's not your legal partner or without a contract. I mean, we've seen this time and time again. Those people who don't follow that advice have kept me in business for 27 years. <laughs> we'll keep telling them that. <laughs> You're right. Case number 2021. Parker versus Miles. All parties, please step forward. Frankie Parker is suing his tenant, Miranda Miles, for the cost of a French bulldog. Mr. Parker, this case is about a puppy that you allegedly sold to the defendant. Yes, ma'am. That you want to be paid for. She has some sort of nonsense counterclaim. Yes, ma'am. Uh, which I will get to and resolve quickly. Great. So, Mr. Parker, you have a home that has two units in it? We have a triplex, so I have a, it's a house and then it's a triplex behind the house. So you live in the main house? Yes. Behind the main house, there are three units? Yes. When did you rent one of the three units to the defendant? I rented it to her around February. I think I put the ad in early February. She of what year? 2022. Is that correct, Ms. Miles? that you moved into the unit in approximately February of 2022. It was March, but yeah. You put the ad in in February. Yes, ma'am. Moved in in March. And what was the rent that you had? 1250. You have children? Yes. How many? One. How old? Nine. According to what I read, you decided to go into the dog breeding business. Yes, ma'am. You knew nothing about dog breeding. Well, I know about dogs, but I didn't know about French bulldogs. That was kind of new to me. What is your regular business, sir? Property management. Other than the property that you live in, do you have any other property that yes, you manage? Yes, ma'am. You're really supposed to be sort of an expert before you go into the breeding business. Yeah, well, I, I had a lot of breeding business, help. that's sort of a foolhardy thing. I, I, had a lot, I had a lot of help. I wasn't by myself. I had people that was already breeding. They had 20 years, uh, Okay, so years you experience. had somebody to yes, give you I, sort of instruction. I didn't just jump into okay. it. Yes, ma'am. And you decided to breed French Bulldogs. Yes, ma'am. You purchased your first two French Bulldogs, a male and a female, when? I purchased them around January. Of 2022? Yes, ma'am. And then you bought another one? Yes, ma'am, another group When female. did you purchase the other one? I bought the other female around February. 
Okay, that's about the same time that you posted an ad for this unit that you moved into. Yes, ma'am, all around the same and time. And that dog, I believe, based upon my recollection and my memory isn't what it used to be, I think the dog's name is Dolce. Dolce, yes, ma'am. How old was Dolce when you purchased her in February? She was approximately three months. How much did you pay for her? I paid $3,200 for her. And did you have AKC papers for her? Yes, ma'am. Now, according to your complaint, when the defendant moved in, she moved in in March, she moved in with her nine-year-old daughter. The nine-year-old daughter saw this dog, Dolce, became attached to the dog, yes. fell in love with the dog, and the defendant agreed to purchase the dog. Yes, ma'am. And you acknowledge that you agreed to purchase the dog? Yes. In March of 2022, how much did you agree to pay Mr. Parker for the dog? When we, I went to the apartment, he told me 2,500. No, he told that's you 20. That's not true. Now, he said Miss, shh. He comes to my house, knocks on my door randomly all the time. He put cameras on the neighbors. Then move. Listen to me. I don't have the money. Listen to me. Well, that's again not his problem. He wants his rent on time, and right. he would like to be paid for his dog. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Frankie and Miranda. Frankie Parker claims his tenant, Miranda Miles, owes for the cost of a French bulldog. Miranda is countersuing for harassment and invasion of privacy. Miss Miles, I want you to think more clearly, try to be clear. He had just paid $3,200 for the dog. I didn't know that. So, according to you, he agreed to sell you the dog for $2,500. Yes. And then he changed it to 35 when I moved in. Oh, so yeah. before you moved in, he mm -hmm. said 25, but after yes. you moved in, he said 35. Yes. Did you agree to pay him the 35? Yes. Okay, so now you have an agreed price of $3,500, which sounds more reasonable than 25 yeah. because he paid more for the dog. Yeah, than I mean, that's the... not entirely true. I told her 5,000 at first, okay. but we do a co-ownership, which brought the price down to 3,500. Okay. Right now, she agreed to pay you $3,500. Yes. She doesn't understand from co-ownership. You're talking about breeding down the road. Did you pay him any part of the $3,500? No. Okay, now let's go further. Are you still living in the unit behind him? Yes. So now, that's March, April, May, June, July, August. Did you pay March's rent? Yes. April? Yes. May? Yes. June? Yes. July? Yes. And August? Not yet. Did she pay everything except August so far? Yes, but I had to take her to court to almost evict her to get the money. Okay. When did you start eviction proceedings? In what month? I started eviction proceeding in June. After How much behind in, in rent was she? She was just that month, but she had been late two prior times, so... Okay. How late is late? Well, I gave you a grace period up to the 4th. Sometimes it's like the 10th. Sometimes. sometimes it was like the 10th. Yes. So we're not talking about months late. No, she was okay. never, and she always paid. When you took her to court to evict her for non-payment of rent, she came up with the money. Yes. Now, we're August 5th now. Did you pay your rent? Not yet. Honestly, I'm struggling. I'm unemployed right now, and I have... He knows my situation with my bank and my account right now, and he knows why. I have no funds at this moment. Oh, but that's his business. I get you it. See, mm -hmm. that's his business. Mm -hmm. Do you work? Not at the moment. Why? Because I got fired. Why? Because I didn't have transportation, and I... I was so you didn't go. Well, if you don't go to work or if you come late, then you get fired. Right, and I also have health problems that I've been going through as well. That is also, Miss Miles, not his problem. I know. Now... I'm going to go back to something that Mr. Parker said, because I think that it's sort of important for me to be able to resolve your counterclaim, because for sure, you owe him the price of the dog, which you still have, correct? Yes. Did he discuss with you a co-ownership of the dog, which would mean that you would share the litters if the dog was bred? Yeah, he did. I wasn't very clear about it, but yes, he did. And I was willing to do that, so I was able to afford the dog. Mm -hmm. That's going to help me resolve the issue. And you gave him no part of the $3,500? No. So, do you want to tell me what your defense is to this? Because your counterclaim is ridiculous. I don't even remember what it is. For harassment, slander, invasion of privacy. He comes to my house, uh, knocks on my door randomly all the time, every day. He put cameras. Then move. Just a second. Then move. He put cameras then on move. my neighbors. Listen I, to I don't me. have the money. Listen to me. 
move. I don't have the money. Well, that's, again, not his problem. He wants his rent on time, and right. he would like to be paid for his dog. Right. Okay, let's move on okay. to something that's viable, okay. okay? Let's talk about this breeding of the dog, mm -hmm. which I think would be absolutely ridiculous. Have you taken the dog to the vet? Yes. Dog's gotten its shots? Absolutely. And other than the fact that you say you're not working, there's no reason that you're not paying him for the dog, which you originally agreed to. No. $3,500, judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Thank you very much. But, Your Honor, she's supposed to get full breeding rights. I'm not dog. giving her full breeding rights to anything. Well, she can't take care of herself or her nine-year-old. She has no money. How is she going to breed a well, dog? We can't, we can't do the co-ownership. No, well, you're not doing a co-ownership, sir. She just bought the dog for $3,500, period. Was, that wasn't you the keep, agreement. Oh, just a second. You keep the papers. Do you understand? Okay. You keep the papers. She yes, doesn't get the AKC papers. So okay. She That's keeps enough. the dog, which means she's going to take care of the dog, get it spayed, do whatever she's supposed to do with the dog. Okay. You get $3,500, and don't make deals like this again. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Great. Right, this court is adjourned. Yeah, I wanted either to have the whole full dog and not no co-ownership, but I guess it didn't work out for me. You know, I was trying to get the whole amount, so we won't have to do a co-ownership anymore, so you can either get the dog, the whole rights to it, or just pay me out. I think he was trying to help me pay for it, and that's why he said the co-ownership, because I was unable to pay for the whole um, 5500 The whole rights to it, or just pay me out, you know. I think that's what he was trying to do. But I think the Overall, the judgment was fair. We live next door, so we have to. I hope that we can actually do this together and... We're good. Me and him are good. I hope it does run smoothly and we don't have any more, like, mishaps. Sarah and Judy. The case itself was easy, Sarah. Promised you buy the dog. Your daughter is in love with the dog. And he said, well, I can't pay for it. Uh, this time, the dog's attached, and he seems like a very, very yeah. nice man. But we had two little Maltese dogs once. I don't know if you remember them. I remember them. the story. Do you remember the story? <laughs> you were too young to remember the dogs. They were two yappy, little yappy Maltese dogs. And we thought it might be an interesting experience to breed them. Oh, yeah. And Poppy, two New York City judges. Your decided. two New York City judges <laughs> decided that it was dogs. the worst experience. First of all, I remember after, and I think we had two or th maybe three in the litter, and I couldn't leave them home. So I would take them in a box in my car to, to the courthouse <laughs> and open the... Michael Codia and his girlfriend, Brianna Serrano, for a personal loan, car damages, and an assault. Court, come to order. All rise. Judy enters. Have a seat, please. Kevin approaches the bench. Hello, Judge. Case number 2056, Garrett versus Codio scenario. Thank you. Ms. Garrett, this gentleman, Michael Codia, is that? Correct. Codia? Yes. You and Mr. Codia have been lifelong friends, according yes. to what I read in the complaint. Lifelong, you're both very young. How do you know him? Well, we used to ride bikes together. His mom used to also braid my hair when I was a child, every Sunday. But you and Mr. Codia were never involved in any relationship other than just friendship? No. And Mr. Codia, Ms. Serrano, is currently your girlfriend. Correct. Yes, yeah. She had been your girlfriend and been living with you for a while, and you have a child together. Yes, correct. Well, she's currently pregnant. We're expecting, we're, hmm? we're expecting yeah, we're expecting. Great. <laughs> you had a fight. Yes. With Miss Serrano. And that was around June of this year? Yes, Your Honor. And it was a substantial enough fight that Miss Serrano left the home, and she left the home with your child. And how old is your child? As I was saying, we're, we are expecting. So you don't have a child no. together? She's six months pregnant, though, currently. OK. So you're just living together, and she left? Correct. At about the same time, Miss Garrett, your friend, needed a place to stay. I wouldn't say needed a place to stay, but... What would you say? It was more like, um, I, I kind of had a clue that like she had a place to stay, but it was just one of those situations. No, no, look over here. Look over here. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Now, Mr. Cody, I want you to understand there are very few stories that are new under the sun. I want you to really understand that. I have children. I have grown grandchildren, boys and girls. I've seen all the movies that I want to see about romance and guys. So your girlfriend leaves you. Yeah. Yes. And would it be fair to say that you invite Miss Garrett to come and stay with you? Yes, it would be fair. Had you ever invited her to come and stay with you before? No, I have not. Not in the current apartment that I'm staying in right now, no. Had you in another apartment? No. So the answer is, 
you had never invited your friend to come and stay with you before. No. Interesting. So on June 27th, she left. On what date did you invite Miss Garrett to come and stay in your apartment? June 16th. June 16th? Yes. So 11 days before Miss Serrano left? Miss Serrano left about a week prior to her coming. What date did you leave, Miss Serrano? Do you recall? I don't recall. I recall it was the end of or mid June of this year, I would say. I had personal things going on, so I really wasn't, you know. <laughs> now, Miss Serrano, I'm going to ask you why you left. Um, we had a falling out. Me and Michael had a falling out. Yes. Why did you and Michael have a falling out about? Well, at the time, my mother was in the hospital, so that it was a disagreement surrounding having to move back home and take care of her in the household. And? And that was pretty much it. Well, what did he say? He said he didn't want you to, and you... Yeah, he pretty much, long story short, didn't want me to move back to my mother's house, so that caused, you know... Okay, so he wanted you to stay. Yes. Yes, he wanted me to stay, but, you know... He wanted you to stay. Now, did you know that the two of you were expecting at that time in June? Yes. yes. So he knew that you were expecting a baby, that you wanted to go back to your mother's house because she was ill and you wanted to help take correct. care of her. Is that correct? Correct, yes. And despite the fact that he said, don't go, you left. Yes, ma'am. And you went home. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it would be fair to say that he was annoyed. I, if you Just... want, yes. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. Oh, I'm getting this whole picture now. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> okay. And about a week later, he invites this attractive young lady who's been a friend of his for a long time, a non romantic friend, to move into the apartment. Yes. You know that that was nasty, right? Oh, no, I'm... I, yes, I know. You know that that, that was nasty. That was an agreement between them. No, no, no. Them, you know. But you know that that was a sort of a nasty thing oh, to no, do. Oh, no, I'm fully aware. Yes, oh, okay. yes ma'am. Yes. I just want... Yes. I just want you to know what you're you. sort of dealing with. Yes, I'm, you know? so I'm fully aware of what I'm dealing oh, with. <laughs> thank okay. you, though. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> good. Okay, so, Mr. Cody, I wanted to sort of get even a little bit. You invite Miss Garrett to come and move in, no rent or anything, because you didn't have an agreement to pay rent. You weren't going to pay rent or anything, and you moved in. And you moved in on? I moved in on the 1st. On the 1st of? July. July 1st. Now, Miss Serrano, yes. I'm going to come back to you, because this is such a fascinating story. Oh, <laughs> such a fascinating story. And he deserves to get dumped on a little bit. Oh, there's you know? where that came from, yeah. Hmm? I said, that's more where that came from, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And between the time you left yes. and July 1st, yes. when Miss Garrett was invited to come to stay at the yes. house, were you in communication with Mr. Codia? Yes. I would say, like, every day or every other day, we spoke, you know, okay. arguments, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah. With the man. Well, <laughs> you know, first of all, you're pregnant and you yes. have emotions and then you're taking care of family members and whatever, and so... I got it. Did he tell you that Miss Garrett was moving in? Um, yes. When? I would say I found out around, like, the 27th, 28th. Of June? Yes. Tell me how you found out that she was moving in. I believe at that point she was already moved in at that point. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what made you think that? Just based off of how the conversation went of, of, or how he told me. Tell me what he told you. What I was told was that a friend was moving in to solely cook and clean. Nashera smirks. Caption coming up. I'm sorry. See what's happening to him? This right. fly is getting vengeance on him. That's getting on me. Yeah. What the hell is going on? Oh, you got a swapper too. Wow. I'm waiting for it You're to waiting. come over here. Yes. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Nashera, Michael, and Brianna. Nashera Garrett claims her former friend, Michael Codia, and his girlfriend, Brianna Serrano, owe for a personal loan and an assault. Tell me what he told you. I'm um, curious. Well, I want to know. Was told, what I was told was that a friend was moving in to solely cook and clean. That's what I was told. OK, did he tell you who? Who it was. I never met her. But he prior. told you who it was? Yes, he told me who it was. And that made you? I would probably guess a little annoyed and unhappy. I mean, it, I was annoyed. I, I would be annoyed. I mean, I was annoyed because I had personal things going on, but in between that time before actually realizing that she was living at my apartment, I actually had a brief interaction with her. I met her at a park. I met her, so... Between the time you moved out? Yes. Okay. Was it you met 
because you contacted each other or no, you met we by met accident? Me and, we met because me and Michael just, you know, had a conversation to have had at that point in time. I'm assuming she was there in the area, so he just wanted to kill two birds with one stone. He said, do you want to meet the person, you know, who who's there, who I'm living with, and that's how it went. And was it a cordial meeting? Yes, it was. You met her, she met you? Yes. And he said, I just want you to meet the lovely looking girl that I'm now living with because you went home I to take so. care of your mother. I guess so, if you want to put it. Yes, he. Don't <laughs> forget. <laughs> 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 yeah. This is what your case is about. First, you claim that you loaned Mr. Cody $750 for rent. Yes. And you did that because he said once Miss Serrano moved out, she wasn't paying her rent, he was short on rent. That's what I read here. Mr. Cody has a whole different story. He said while he told you that he was a little short on rent and he was going to have to get a third job. That's not true. Just a second. You jumped in and offered to give him $750. That's what you wrote here. Is that right? Correct. Now, Mr. Cody, did you tell Miss Serrano that somebody was moving into the apartment just to cook and clean? That's what she says. Yes, that's exactly my words. Exactly my that's, words, yeah. That's exactly what you told her. Correct. You didn't tell Miss Serrano, the soon-to-be mother of your child, that you had a roommate who was paying rent. I did not. Miss Serrano, what kind of work were you doing when you were living together in June? I had a work-from-home position, will still currently do as a Medicaid specialist. Were you sharing rent with him? Yes. Everything was 50-50. Did you pay him any rent in July? No, I did, did not. Did you pay him rent in June? Yes. So you paid him the $750. That was your share of the rent? Is that yes. what your share yes. was? that was my share of the rent. June was already paid for. July, I did not pay because I did not believe I was going to be there. Okay. Tell me what he said to you that caused you to give him the $750. Well, he texted me one morning and said that Brianna was no longer going to pay her half of the rent as of July, and that if he can... You were living there already? Yes. And if I give him 750 he would give it back to me. And we never discussed anything about me cooking or cleaning. I actually brought groceries, which he said that he would pay me back for, too, while I'm staying there. Okay. So, so you were actually exchange. there for five days, is that right? About five days. Five, six days. And at some point around the first week in July, July 5th, 6th, or 7th, you came to the apartment. Yes. Tell me what happened. We had went inside the apartment. Who's we? Michael and I, sorry. Michael so and you I were at, So you weren't staying there. Where had you met him? We actually met at work. We've been together, well, we've been together for a year no, and a half. No, I understand that. Yeah. But you came home to the apartment together, and that was, I think, on the 7th of July. Yes. On the 7th yeah. of July. Where had you been? You'd been out, you hadn't been staying in the apartment. Oh, no, yeah, I was out actually just going to rosaries and stuff like that. I actually went to go pick him up after a family function from work. After picking him up from work, we went back to the apartment, went upstairs. Was that the first time you had been back to the apartment? No. I've, since you left? Since I left, I've been there on and off. Like, not on and off, but like every other couple days. But I've been there, not living there, but I've been there spending the night and, you know. Have you ever, when you were there, have you seen Miss Garrett? Nope, but I've seen her belongings, though. Okay. But you knew she was there, because yeah. he told you that she was there. Exactly. So yeah. on the yeah. 7th, you picked him up, you went back to the apartment, and yeah. you'd been there before, but you had never actually physically seen her in the apartment. Correct. Despite the fact that you knew she was there. Correct. Because you'd been introduced to her. Correct. Okay. And what happened? So we went upstairs. She seen that I was with him, and I guess that must have made her mad. No, just tell me what happened. So there was an argument. Tell me what the argument was. I don't, even, what? I don't even know what the argument was, honestly. Did... She's just seen me, and then there was an argument that unfolded about what I still don't know to this day. Okay, <laughs> so now, Miss Garrett, they came home, and... Okay, so them two never came in the apartment together at all that night and previously. No, just tell me that night. Oh, oh that night. So me and Michael discussed that, hey, listen, things are not working out. He has had multiple people in and out his house, and he was making me very uncomfortable, as well as Miss Serrano popping up. So, so what do you say? He's had multiple people in the, the house. Guys, women every night. I would sleep in the park. One night, I slept in the park because he had Miss Serrano popping up at 3 o'clock in the morning, her throwing my things around, telling me to get out the house. So I had to go in my car and go sleep in the park. 
And we had conversations that night when it happened, when she popped up. Hey, can I go see What date was that? It was, I want to say July the 2nd or the 3rd. OK. Yeah. Before the 7th. Right. OK. And that's when you went out and slept in the park? Yes. Just a second. Mr. Cody, you remember that evening? Yes, I do. OK. And that evening on July 2nd or 3rd, Ms. Serrano was around. And they don't get along. They do not. Which is exactly what you anticipated. Of course. When you invited her to stay with you. Sadly. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Going to have two women fight over the prize, the grand Great. prize. OK. Did you take $750 from her? No, I did, did you? Not. Did you? I didn't ask you a loan. Yes, I did. didn't ask you. She has proof that she gave it to you. Yes, she did. OK. Did. So let's not play. Did you take $750 from yes, her? I did. So it goes back to her. That's $750. Now we're going to get to what she alleges is the remainder of her lawsuit, which is damages for assault. OK. On the 7th of July, there was some sort of an altercation. You want to tell me what that was? Yes. Caption, coming up. You did something that annoyed him. You went back to take care of your sick mother, which also attests to his bad character. And then what he does is he invites someone, a woman, to come into the house because he knows that it's going to irritate you. That's exactly what happened. He acknowledges that. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Nashera, Michael, and Brianna. Nashera Garrett has accused her former friend, Michael Codia, and his girlfriend, Brianna Serrano, of damaging her car and assaulting her. Now, on the 7th of July, there was some sort of an altercation. You want to tell me what that was? Yes. So um, that evening, I went into the house, and he had his witness, Darius, there. And this person? Yes. And he, me and Michael had conversations about him before, and I just thought it wasn't a good influence. So that evening, I walk in the house, and I had, I'm sorry, let me back that up. I asked Michael if he's going to have men come in the house, could he please be there while I'm there with them? Because I didn't feel comfortable. He said yes. So when I walked in that evening and saw Darius there, I texted Michael and said, Michael, we need to have another talk. Because every talk we have, I'm thinking that you, we're having understandings, but we're not. So, and Darius set up a whole twin size bed up in the living room. <laughs> in the living room. So I went out to my car. I said, Michael, when you get home, I'm in my car. So meet me in my car when you get off. It was around 8.30 when Michael had came and I was sitting in my car. Me and Michael were talking. And was he in your car with no, you? No, no, no. He was outside of, of my driver's side. So that's when Miss Brianna came and she started hitting him upside his head. And I tried to get out of the spot that I was in. And next thing I know, my window's down and she comes and she's attacking me, punching me in my face. She keyed up my car. When she first came up to my window, she keyed my car. Yeah, I have, I can show you. What? Okay, did you file a police report? I didn't. Why? I just didn't. I took care of my bruises and my scar. I just, I did call 911, but then I hung up. I just, <laughs> I just didn't. And I. Okay. Do you have photographs of your injury? Do you have yes. Nashera produces photos, then hands them to Kevin. There you go. He brings them to Judy, who reviews them. So what you're telling me is that this was a scratch yes. across your chest. Mm -hmm. And that's a scratch that was caused by Miss Serrano. Yes. And that was in July. Yes. Miss Serrano, I'd like to hear your version of what happened on the 7th of July. Like I said before, there was just an argument that okay. took place. There was an, I want you to start. I want you to start the argument the from the beginning. Okay. Okay. She's outside in her car. Mm -hmm. Michael is talking to her at the car. Oh yeah. Did you drive over there or did you walk? How did you get I, there? Park my car like in front of the house because they were on the side street. So I walked. She walked there. Exactly. And parked yes, the car. Now let me ask you a couple of questions, Miss Serrano. Yeah. Did Mr. Codia ever give you an indication that Miss Garrett was no longer going to be living there? Not that I could recall. No. Well, I, I mean, want I you to try to after, recall. I was told after that whole day went, the day after that, the conversation was going to be for her to leave the house. OK. And what were you coming over for? What brought you over there at 8 o'clock at night? 
for him. It what do you wasn't, mean for him? Well, he left something in my car. He left a charger or something. It was something he left in my car that I was returning back to. Did you tell him you were coming over? Nope, nope. I just popped up. <laughs> the answer is no. No. You were curious. Yes, I was. Of course I was. There you were. There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You see what's happening to him? This fly. fly is getting it's vengeance crazy. on him. That's getting on me too. What the hell's going on? Oh, you got a swapper too, wow. I'm waiting for it You're to come over here. Judy with a fly swatter. Did you seek medical treatment? I did not. Mr. Cody, I'm going to wrap up this case because I really understand it. I believe I understand it. What I don't understand is why, and this doesn't require an answer, it's sort of a rhetorical question, why you would want to take someone who had been a lifelong friend and someone with whom you were having a child and put either one or both of them in a situation so they don't know each other, really, so they don't know whether to like each other or whether not to like each other. I mean, I assume that at this point you would... At least Miss Serrano was planning a long-term relationship with you, and she's having a child, and I assume she thinks you're going to be there to be supportive of the child. Maybe. You have other Great. children? Yes, I do. How many children do you have? I have uh, another son. Okay, how old? Five years old, five. And he lives with his mother? Yes, he does. So you see. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Judy raises her fly swatter. <laughs> this one's a pesky one. I'm usually good at it. I missed it before. Whitney grins. I don't know why you would put them in a situation where they would dislike each other all to satisfy your ego. Wow. Oh, that's, well, that's exactly what you did. You put them in a position where two apparently nice ladies both of whom care about you in different ways. You put them... Well, do you care about him? Yes. You think she cares about him? She, I've never, the entire time I was with They just know each other for a long time. So Way care. before me, so I guess if you would have been like that... And they also went to just senior a sec, prom together. Just a second. Wow, like they I didn't ask together. you... I'm sorry, Your Honor. I didn't ask you anything. This is not a shout-out. What I'm telling you is, gotcha. it goes to his character. He knows her for a long time. They never had a romantic relationship. With you, he's had a romantic relationship. You did something that annoyed him. You went back to take care of your sick mother, which also attests to his bad character. And then what he does is he invites a woman to come into the house, lets you know about it, because he knows that it's going to irritate you. That's exactly what happened. He acknowledges that. That doesn't make him a good guy. So I want you to think about that. But I absolutely believe that you caused the scratch on her, which you can't do. Anyway, Mr. Cody, you owe her $750. And Ms. Serrano, you can't put your hands on anybody, no matter how angry you are at them. And I'm awarding her $1,000 for you putting your hands on her. Okay. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're done. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I was very satisfied. I mean, I knew it would cause havoc, but... Uh, Different women every night. I try to keep it in secret. And that's why we stopped being friends before, but... I definitely learned my lesson. I feel like it's unfortunate. I feel like she manipulated the whole situation. The friend For water damage. Judy enters. Court come to order. All rise. Be seated, please. Kevin approaches. Hello, Judge. Case number 2077, Zako versus Sheldon Foy. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Zako, you had some sort of a problem in a shower in your house. Yes, Your Honor. Tell me briefly what the problem was. I had a small dribble coming from around a shower valve that was in my master bathroom shower. Tell me what valve it was. You know, I'm not a... Well, problem. I have a picture that I'd I can like to show you. Just make a circle where the problem was. I believe it was the top one. Just make a circle. Thank you. Carla marks a document. Who's Mr. Shelton? Robbie raises his hand. Kevin brings the document to Judy. Change places with each other. Thank you. Okay, and you saw a water drip. Yes, very fine little drizzle okay. coming. You saw water dripping, and according to my complaint, you had seen around the neighborhood a truck, Foy's Plumbing. Yes, I have. And that's how you got to Mr. Foy. Correct. My neighbor had used him. Did you speak to the neighbor, or did you just remember seeing the truck? No, I spoke to my neighbor. Can you tell me on what date you noticed the leak and on what date you spoke to the neighbor? Probably around the 10th or so of December. That was in a shower that you don't use, but your husband Correct. uses? I'm, I'm widowed. So okay, so who told you about the leak? The housekeeper. 
Okay. And then did you check it yourself? Yes. And this small leak had been there for a couple of weeks before you got to Mr. Foy. Correct. After you spoke to the neighbor and confirmed that this neighbor had used Mr. Foy, mm -hmm. when you called Mr. Foy, did you actually speak to him? No. Who did you speak to? It was a woman that answered the phone. I Who believe. answered the phone? Do you know? Uh, Alma did. I'm the office manager. Okay, could you stand up, please? Tell me your name. My name is Alma Valdez. And you work for Mr. Foy? Yes. And you have a plumbing company? Yes, ma'am. How many employees do you have in the company? Uh, right now, only three. He's not one of them? Yes, he's one of the employees. How long has he been an employee? Oh, on and off, 15 years. What does that mean, on and off? Well, a couple of times he went to work for another plumbing company and then came back. Was he an employee of your company, pay careful attention, in December of 2021? Yes, he was. Okay. And paid on the books? Yes. Is he still an employee? Yes, he is. Do you recall receiving the call in December from Ms. Seiko? Yes, I got a call from her on, I believe it was December 28th, saying that she had a leak. And so we set up an appointment for the next day. Do you day. remember the conversation you had with her? Did she tell you she had been recommended by a neighbor? You know, I don't recall. We did set up the appointment for the following day. That would be December 29th? Yes. Have a seat. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Shelton was the person that Mr. Foy sent to Correct. you, and you were a full-time employee of Foy's Plumbing. Tell me what happened when you got there. Well, when I first got there, I noticed water running out of the handle. It was dripping out of the handle because it had been there for, since December 10th. It was kind of, it was streaming out. It was a pretty decent stream of water coming out. The plaintiff doesn't use that shower, correct? correct? So the first thing that someone would have done, even me, is turn off the water. Is that what you did? Well, I wanted to go see what the leak really was. Well, you looked yeah. first, and then I went out and shut the water off, and then came back in to pull the cartridge to identify. And there's no markings on the plate, so I, I couldn't really tell exactly what brand it was. We do carry a variety of brands, but more of your typical... You're brands. getting too technical with me, okay. sir. Okay. This is what the case is about. He came in out the same day, the 28th. He said he didn't have the part. You have other complaints about his behavior on that day. You say he was a little bit off. He left without a different part being put in. And you called another plumber? When? I called, actually, my contractor that night to come over and look at it. He came over in the morning, which... So is... he didn't come over that night. He came over the next day. Correct. The next morning, he gave me No, you referral. can't tell me what he gave you. He's not here. It is your claim that because of the actions of Mr. Shelton, and which are attributable to Mr. Foy, who owns the company, you suffered severe water damage in your house, causing you to have to replace substantial flooring in the house, and you want Mr. Foy to be responsible. Correct. You have insurance. I just want to make sure you do have insurance. You're yes. a company. We're licensed in the state of California. Okay. We're required to carry insurance. That's what the case is about. You want the company to be responsible. They did not come back and fix the problem. Someone else did, but by the time it was remedied, water had already seeped through and under the floors. You have evidence of that. Mr. Foy said that that's not his problem. So I'd like you to tell me what happened on the 29th when Mr. Shelton came. What time did he come in? I think he came around uh, 12, 1230. So we came in, uh, went to the bathroom, looked at it, um, took out the cartridge. He did turn off the water. And then he said he had to go look for the part. He left. He was gone for over an hour, returned, said, I don't have a part, they don't have it. And as he's talking to me, his phone rings again, and it's the plumbing place. And they said, oh, we have the part. He left again for another hour. He comes back the third time, and he says, they still don't have the part. By this time, it's like three hours had passed. And I'm sitting in my living room, and I hear tools dropping in the shower. I said to him at one point, do you think you need to call for somebody else, some help? And he said, no, I can handle this. Did he leave? Five o'clock, I'm left. waiting. I have a friend that shows up at my house because we were going for dinner. And I said, well, we have to wait for the plumber to leave. And she goes, there's no car out front of your house. You didn't know when he left? No, I did not know okay. when he left. Did the shower look as if it had been put back in place? Did it look? Pretty much like this. It was like that, but the stream of water that was minuscule before was much stronger. Okay. That doesn't actually help you. No. That hurts you because he said the water was a pretty rapid... Is that what you oh, told no, me? I, Just one second. Yeah. Could you read back, Whitney, how Mr. Shelton described the water? He said it was streaming out. It was a pretty decent amount of water coming out. Yeah. He said that was pretty decent when you got there. 
And I am correct, Mr. Shelton, that when you left the house that day, you had not found a part to fix it. Is that correct? Correct. And I am correct that when you went to disassemble it, you turned the water off. Yes. Because it was leaking. Yes. And then you didn't fix it because you didn't have the right part. And then you turned the water back on. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Don't speak. Caption coming up. Did you tell her that those were her options? Yes. It would still no be leaking. No way. It would still be leaking. No way did you say to her, this shower is still going to be leaking. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Carla, Scotty, and Robbie. Carla Sacco claims plumbers Robbie Shelton and Scotty Foy owe for damage from a water leak. Now, when you left on the 29th without having put in an appropriate part because you couldn't find it, this leak which caused you to turn off the water because it was a pretty significant leak, you turned the water back on. The reason why I turned the water off, because you had to take the cartridge out. If I left the water on and took the cartridge out, what do you mean? Listen, Mr. Shelton. I know, that, that's Mr. why Shelton, I turned the water Mr. Shelton, off. Shelton, you're not being a two-process thinker, sir. Let me explain something to you. I came to California from Connecticut to the place where we live in California. I walked into the master bath, to the toilet. Et voila, I see a puddle of water around the toilet. I say to myself, self, you went to law school. You don't know what this is. But it's not a leak that's coming from the back. It's a leak that looks like it's coming from the bottom. So I called engineering. Fortunately, I live in a place where somebody will come up. They came up right away. The first thing they did was turn off the water. Smart, just like you did. Then they opened up the problem, looked at the problem, and said, we need a part. Unfortunately, those are not the same parts that we keep in the hotel. We'll have to order it. Turned off the water. Use a different bathroom for the two, three days it needs to get the part. You weren't there. So just pay attention to me, Mr. Foy. You weren't there. I'm just letting you know what common sense is living on the planet for a long time. If you have a leak that's caused by a faulty part, and you don't fix the part because you don't have the part, you turn the water off. May I point something out? He had to turn off the water to the whole house because there is no shut off to the shower. Just a he, second. He had turned the water Just off to the whole house and, and he put this cartridge back before he turned the water on. What difference does it make if he put the cartridge back? He has taken the cartridge apart. No. In order to see what it was, he took it out of the wall. He took it out of the wall, but it does yeah, not Mr. take it Mr. Shelton, apart. if your employee, and if what you're saying is accurate, which I don't actually think is accurate, because every room in a house usually has a turn-off valve, especially in the bathroom, so you don't have to turn off all the water to the kitchen and to other bathrooms, perhaps. If there's a problem in the shower, there's a master lever for the whole house, and then there are smaller levers for each. For I don't... Every, for everything except the shower, ma'am. What do you mean for everything except the, the shower? You, the shower does not have an individual shutoff. You do indeed have to shut off the water to the house. The vanities, the toilets all have individual angle stops, but the shower does not. Were you ever at the house? No, ma'am. No. So you were never at the house? No, ma'am. How many square feet is your house? It's 2,500. It's a substantial house. So you're telling me in a 2,500 square foot house, if you have a leak in the shower, you have to turn off all the water if you want to turn off the shower water. Yes, ma'am, that's absolutely correct. That's absolutely correct. Having not been there. Yes, ma'am, I build houses. No, 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 no. I, I don't care with you, Bill. You that, weren't in that house. This has no shut off, ma'am, other than the whole house. You have to shut the water to the house off to shut that off. So now here's my question. Did you tell the plaintiff that she had two options, either to shut the water off in the whole house until you could get a part because there was still a leak, or you could leave it on but you have to watch it because according to you, the water was substantial that was coming out. She said it was a trickle. You said, oh, no, 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 no. It was a steady stream of water. And that was before you started messing with it. So my question to you is, did you tell her that those were her options? She's not a plumber. That you either had to turn off all the water in the house and you would return the next day with a part or you could leave the water on, but it was still gonna be leaking. Did you tell her that? Yes. It would still no be leaking. No way. It would still be leaking. No 
was. It was leaking when no I No <laughs> way, Mr. Shelton. No way did you tell her that. No way did you say to her, this shower is still going to be leaking because I can't shut the water off just to the bathroom. I have to shut off all the water in the house. If you're trying to sell me that story, I have a bridge I want to sell you because I don't believe it. There's no way to isolate that valve. I didn't ask you that. When it comes to the shower... You were, you were never there. Or, or the tub. Just a second. You can't you were, turn it off individually. You were never there. I have this question for you. How many bathrooms do you have in your house? Three. When he left the first time and he shut the water off, did he indicate to you that you couldn't use the water anywhere in the house? Yes. I I believe he told me at first that he was going to shut off the water to the house. OK, so you knew. So you couldn't use any other of the toilets in the house? No. OK, you may be getting better. When he left, did you use the bathroom? The answer is yes. Yes. So you knew that the water had been turned back on? Oh, absolutely. In the house. Just a minute. So you knew the water had been turned back on in the house, even though he didn't tell you I'm turning it back on. You knew. And you knew that he hadn't fixed the problem. Correct. So you knew that you better watch this, which is why you called your contractor to come and look at it. Correct. You're getting better, Mr. Foy. You're coming into a better place, you see? Things work themselves out. Now, you know that the water is still dripping. You know that there's still a leak. Correct. You know that if you use the water, that water is still going to be a steady stream coming out. You didn't get another plumber there until when? The next morning. Well, that's your contractor. You said he came the no, next morning. No, I got a plumber there the next morning. OK. OK. And they came, and did they fix the valve? They had to open the wall to cap off the hot and cold water. So it was a water. big job. It was huge. I neglected to say it in the beginning, but when he took the shower valve off, he looked in the wall and he said, it's dry in there. You're lucky. So that next morning when I walked into the master bedroom and I was walking in wet, I did call the sky boy. Mm -hmm. Now tell me where you felt it when you walked into the master bedroom. Do you have wood floors there or carpet? It's all wood. And it was right as I got to where the bathroom and the master bedroom meet. There's no door. So it was outside that it was wet. I thought my dog had an accident on the floor. <laughs> and Prior to the 29th, it's not getting to look good for you again. <laughs> Prior may to I, the time Mr. Shelton... May I clarify? Prior, the room that she's talking about, the shower's here. Probably's working in the shower where it's all tile. You were where the, And we never went into her bedroom. Yes, you, you did. You have to. You can't tell me that because you weren't there. Is the bathroom adjacent to the bedroom? So to get to the master bathroom, you have to walk into the master bedroom and make a left. OK. Now, Mr. Shelton, you recall saying to the plaintiff, when you looked in the wall, you're lucky it's dry in here? I said it looks dry. I'm not, I'm not an ex... Just a second. Mr. I... Shelton, you wouldn't have said to her, it looks dry in here, I'm not an expert. An expert you, in water did you damage. Say... Yeah, I didn't... There was... You can't really see into that wall because it's tiled, right? You can't really look into the wall unless you open it, but there was no reason for me to open it. Evidently, you're wrong. Either you were wrong that it was dry, or when you put the thing back together again, something didn't work. Robbie shakes his head. Caption coming up. After he touched it, it was no longer leaking in the shower. Now it was going through the wall. I'm just telling you, that's the time sequence, unless you believe in miracles. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears in the courtroom. Carla, Scotty, and Robbie. Carla Sacco has accused plumbers Robbie Shelton and Scotty Foy of causing water damage to her home. Robbie and Scotty claimed the leak had been there for weeks. Mr. Foy, you have a lot to say for someone who was never there. Someone who's been a plumber for and 40 I, oh, Just years. a second. I've been alive with houses for longer than you've been a plumber, <laughs> right? And there are certain things just from being on the planet this leak was first detected more than two weeks before your plumber got there, right? That's what she says. However, within that two-week period, there was no water damage to the wood. The I, only I time there was water... Listen, you can shake your head all you like. This is the timeline. We got cold because there this... was a leak, ma'am. No, you got cold because there was a leak leaking, in the shower. And according to her, it was leaking for 10 Mr. days. Mr. Foy, Mr. Foy, what I'm telling you is he would never tell me that when he got there, he noticed anything that would have suggested to him that he best keep the water off in that house because there was water damage. He didn't notice that. He just took it apart, 
couldn't find a part, put it back together again, whichever way he put it back together again, and the next morning, there was a flood. Now, that's the time sequence, because she called you the next morning, couldn't get you at 8.30. I don't know whether she used a house phone, I don't know if she used a cell phone. A cell phone. Cell phone. So she would have a record of calling you at 8.30 the next morning because there was a problem. She felt water. So before your technician got there, there was no water coming up in her bedroom on the wood. And that had been water dripping, he says, a lot. She said it was a trickle for 18 days. Into the shower, ma'am. It was dripping into the shower. Until he touched it. After he touched it, it was no longer leaking in the shower. Now it was going through the wall. I'm just telling you, that's the time sequence, unless you believe in miracles, things that, you know, just happen. Something had been going on for 18 days, and there was no incident of water damage in her bedroom. Your technician comes, doesn't fix the problem, but takes it apart, puts it back together again. The next day, voila, there's water damage on the wood, which has to be replaced. Now, either that could have happened by itself, because your technician says, it's not my job, I don't look behind the wall. But he did acknowledge saying to her, it looks dry in here. Does acknowledge saying that. Now, if I had a plumber and the plumber said, I'm not the expert, I had a leak in my apartment with a leaky toilet. The floor started to go like this. Couldn't figure out where it came from. They came down, they pulled all the walls apart in the apartment. Water travels down. I said, well, if water travels down, why don't you go look <laughs> above me instead of pulling out the walls on the side? Well, if something doesn't make sense, it's usually not true. Can you, Mr. Foy, and you were not there, could you give me another explanation of why? Because I believe her. This woman is not here because she is faking damage to her wood floors that resulted within that day. He, if he left at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, the next day she called you at 8.30. So during that time period was sufficient water that came through her house to cause damage to her floors. Give me another explanation. I contend that it was a leak that, she, that was there. She didn't notice it because, no, no, no. As, as she said, she didn't use that bathroom. She, never, she wasn't oh. in that room. And he was in that room. I, I know, but it, what I'm saying... He is the was water it, damage he was, was, in the was room. there before no, he just, was there. So your explanation is that you sent a technician there. Now it's not looking so good for you, Mr. Foy. Your explanation is your technician didn't notice sufficient leaking from that valve to say to her, you best turn the water off in the house and not use the water until I get back to fix it. He wasn't looking in the bedroom, ma'am. He was in the shower. He saw the leak okay. in the shower. And that's Can I see pictures on. of the floor, please? By Can I way. say something? Sure. When I left, it was not leaking. It was leaking the same way it was leaking when I first got there. You so know, that, out the front. Well, just out a second. The, that's a lot. It was coming according out. To you, well, I mean, what according to you. Well, what a lot. Uh-huh. Well, what a lot to you, me is Mr. a little Shelton. stream is a lot of water. Listen, to Mr. Shelton. Plumber, so. Listen, Mr. Shelton. You know, she said a trickle. You said no. It was a steady stream. Well, yeah, stream. That's steady, steady stream. Steady stream. Yeah. That's what you said, mm-hmm. right? Can I see pictures of the floors, please? between 4 o'clock and 8.30 in the morning. Judy examines photos of damaged flooring. Can I see the bill to fix it, please? I, I also have the, uh, the person that fixed it. He wrote what he did. Oh, yeah. OK, let me see. Kind of itemizes his head. Would you show this, please, to the defendant? Yes. Judy hands the photos to Kevin, who brings them to Scotty. He reviews them. Judy examines an invoice. Thank you. Scotty hands the photos back to Kevin, who returns them to Judy. So, Mr. Foy, I assume you have insurance. You should have used it, because I think you're responsible for the damage to her floors. And I think that that was done because your technician did not do an adequate job of protecting it between the time he found a leak and between the next day. Nothing else makes sense to me. 3589, judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. I don't really agree with it because it was already leaking before I got there and she admitted to it. I'm just thankful this is over. That is a wood floor. Water could have been underneath a wood floor and not showed itself. You would think once they pulled the floor up, there would be mold. I have nightmares about leaks. So. Got justice today. Thank goodness. So, you tell me that there are houses that you know <laughs> where there is a master switch. Yes. 
that you have to turn off for the shower. I know it can be expensive to have all the valves in your house be the individual shut-off valves. I do think it's safer, but honestly, not everyone has the luxury of being able to afford them. Even if that's the case, mm -hmm. you should give the homeowner who called you say, listen, there is a leak here. I can shut off all the water until I return. And Cynthia Booth and her fiance, Dwayne Burnley, for posting damaging reviews. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Kevin approaches the bench. Hello, Judge. Why you Case 2079, Frazee versus Burley Booth. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Frazee, you are an electrician by trade. Correct. And how long have you been in that business, sir? Since 1986 as a license and 1978 as an electrician. Now, maybe a decade ago, you're going to give me the exact year, month and year. You were called to do a job for this lady. Your last name is? Booth. Miss Booth. And you did an electrical job for her. We'll go into it more fully in a minute. When you were doing that job, you brought in a helper. That's... This gentleman, whose name is Mr. Burnley. That's correct. And before you brought in Mr. Burnley, I gather from the papers, Mr. Burnley did not know Miss Booth. Would that be a fair statement? That's a fair statement, but he did not bring me in. I was actually just driving down the street, and I'm new to the mountain, and I drove by and saw Mr. Frazee there, and I was... Listen, this is not gone with the wind. This okay. is not war and peace. I asked you a simple question. Before you were brought in on the job... Okay. ...you didn't know Miss Booth. That's correct. Right. And that was about 10 years ago. Correct. Since that time, since you were brought in on the job, you and Miss Booth have gotten to know each other a lot better. Correct. And I assume that by a lot better that the two of you live together. Correct. And you've been living together for how long? Since November. Of this last year. Yes. November of 2021. But prior to that, you were social friends. Correct. And that social friendship started when first introduced to her at this job. Uh, it's no. the first time you met her. Oh, that's the first time I met her, correct. Correct. This is your problem, and this is the nature of your lawsuit. You allege that you did a job for Miss Booth almost a decade ago, and you came to ascertain that Miss Booth and or Mr. Burnley had written some negative reviews about your company, currently wrote negative reviews about your company, based on work that you did 10 years ago. Yes. That's your complaint. And you asked them to take them down. First they did, then they didn't. You found other ones posted in different areas. Now, Mr. Burnley, are you a working man, sir? Yes. What kind of work do you do? I'm an electrical contractor in business. Okay. Now, at the time that you first met Mr. Frazee, did you have your own company? Yes. You had your own company? Yes. In what year did you do Miss Booth's job? I did it on April 30th, 2013, Your Honor. That's not correct. That's not correct. Shh. Month and year, you say you did the job. The job was done on May 9th of, of 2013. What? Okay, so we're up by a month. Is that right? I don't care. You were talking about nine years ago. Correct. Now, tell me something about the job. What was the nature of the electrical job that you were doing? An older home needs to have at least a minimum of a 100-amp service. Ms. Booth's home had a 70 amp service at the time. She was purchasing it, and that came up on the inspection report to replace that, mm -hmm. which I was engaged to do. So far correct? No. Well, now I'll have your version. Did okay. you have to upgrade the electric? I had to upgrade due to a homeowner's insurance. Okay. That's well, the what home... they required. What's the difference in what he said? He said that you had to have your electricity upgraded. And it came up in the inspection report. It did not come in the inspection report. Well, then how did they find out? Of, I who was found out about with it? With my policy. What do you like, mean you were honest with your well, policy? Well, they asked me what year the house was and what oh, um, amperage it had, and I said 75. And your insurance company said to you it has to be 110. 100. Oh, 100. Yes. Before you could move into the house, for one reason or another, you had to upgrade the electric. Correct. Okay, and you hired Mr. Frazee yes, to they do were that. Yes, my friends. I don't care whether he was your friend or not. If he was your okay. friend and he was a vet, you wouldn't have hired him no. to do your electrical work. <laughs> of course He was not. your friend and he was an electrical contractor. Right, correct. And when he came to your house to look at the job, did he come alone or with a helper? Alone. Once you change the ampage in a house, 
do you have to get somebody from either the county or the city where you live to sign off on it? That's either a yes or a no. Yes. And once Mr. Frazee did that, modified the ampage, did you have an inspection? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have that inspection? Yes. I'd like to take a look at it. And the job was not... I didn't ask you anything. Okay. Hold on. That also includes Mr. Burnley's just a second. inspection. Just a second. I'm sorry. Don't volunteer. I'm old. I get confused. I try to keep these things very linear so even I understand them. Judy reviews a document. This is the inspection sign-off on the work that you did in 2013. 13. Have you seen it? Yes, no. of course you have. No. Well, show it to them. You do remember that you had to have an inspection afterwards. Of course. Of course. Okay, it's just common sense. Mm. If you didn't have the work done and you said to your insurance company, I had the work done, the insurance company would say to you, show me proof that you Correct. had the work done, otherwise we're not giving you insurance. Correct. So you know you had an inspection after he completed the work. It wasn't after it was, the work. The work was never... Shh, this shh, shh. I didn't ask you anything. Okay. But I will answer for you. She was not You can. Okay. You can. It, so the insurance company accepted your word that the work was done? Yes. <laughs> okay. Can I have that back, please? And I, I did tell them I had it signed off, but it was signed off when the job was half done. That's your problem. Okay. You want to sign off when something's half done? Fine. I wouldn't sign off when no, my I hair didn't. was half dry. Caption, coming up. I'm saying to you that it was nasty and malicious. And it wasn't until the two of you were hoochie-coochieing that all of a sudden we got negative reviews about a job they did nine years before. That's ridiculous. It's mean-spirited. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, John, Cynthia Frazee, Cynthia Booth, and Dwayne. John and Cynthia Frazee claim John's former client, Cynthia Booth, and her fiance, Dwayne Burnley, slandered their business. Dwayne is countersuing for filing a wrongful lawsuit. Now, my next question to you is, after 2013, did you perform electrical work for Miss Booth in her house? That's either a yes or a no. Yes. Now I'm going to ask you, what was the nature? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't remember. You mean, just a second, you remember the work that you did when Mr. Frazee was there in 2013, when you were with him, but you don't remember the nature of the work that you did for your girlfriend in 2018? I'm pretty sure it was a panel upgrade. Just I replaced... a second. I want you to think. What kind of work did you do for Miss Booth in 2018? It, it must have been the panel upgrade that I did at her house. I changed the 100 amp out to a 200. Sure, look at me. Because that would be... Look at me. I'm sorry. So you changed the 100 amp. Shh. This is not my strong suit, and I have to tell you something. Of the 100 million people who are watching this, they're going out to get a cup of coffee right now. <laughs> you changed the 100 amp that he had done in 2013 to a 200 amp, you upgraded it in 2018. And put a surge protection system And a in surge house. protection. Yeah, that, now okay. I do recall. Great. When was the first negative review that you can show me written about your company? Now we got what's going on. Now, I, now I have it clear. Honor. Do you have it clear? I think a little bit more fuzzy than you, but clear <laughs> enough. For do you have it clear? I have it clear now. You have it clear? Well, just to make it crystal clear, Mr. Frazee did work at Miss Booth's home in 2013. It was electrical work. It was electrical work performed by him with the help of Mr. Burnley, because in order to get a homeowner's policy on her new house, she had to upgrade to satisfy, according to you, only insurance. Correct. That's what you say, from 70 to 100 amps. Yes. Look, this whole new thing at my age, I'm learning. Now, <laughs> evidently, they liked what they saw in 2013, and that materialized into a romance. Good for you. And in 2018, I assume he was living there? No. When did he move in? November moved... of... Shh! November. November of last year. Yes. Okay. But you were dating in 2018? Yes. Yes. In 2018, Mr. Burnley, not with the help of the plaintiff, replaced and upgraded the 100 amp 
to 200 amp, which is much better because I know that I have 200. That's, you have to plug things in. It's 110, 220, right? Yeah. 110, 220. And he put in a surge protector. Now, even I know what a surge protector is. Correct me if I'm mistaken. That means if there's an overload, a lightning strike, whatever it is, it protects it so the whole board doesn't fry and everything turns off and then you have to replace all the lead. The wires go zzzz. Am I right? Right. So he upgraded the system and touch of necessity what Mr. Frazier did in 2013. No question, had to do that. Now I'd like to see the negative reviews and when they started. The first one we found it was in 2019, Your Honor. Well, are these in order? This was... That's the most current one that was in February of 2022. Did you write this? Frazy Electric, he was supposed to do a panel change and never put rods in and fried my electronics in my home and garage opener. Left such a mess and never cleans up. That's correct. Did you write that? Yes, I did. When? In what year? Uh, it's about three years ago. Three years ago, 2018? Approximately. About when he changed the electrical yes, system. Uh, um, Just a second. Okay. About when he changed the electrical system. All right, then you wrote something... I will not even write this company one star due to the unprofessionalism in completion of work. Hire this electrician to do a 100-watt panel, never grounded, never finished, and left a mess. He's known for not cleaning up. Had to hire another electrical contractor that was most professional. Now, when did you write that review? About the same time. 2018? Yes, on okay. a different now, review. That was a different one. Mm -hmm. And you said that you had to hire another electrical contractor. Yes, I To did. finish the job. And who was that? That was DMB Electric. That was him? Yes, I, I called Just a second. two competitors. Just a second. In what year did you call them? Oh, this was... No, in what year did you call him? 2013. After he left, you called them? I called two other contractors. Just a second. Did you end up using Mr. Burnley? Yes, I did. Okay. So back in 2013, you were dissatisfied with this company. Yes. Let me follow this. 2013, you were dissatisfied with the company. You called... Another company. Two other companies. Just a second. You called another company, but the county had signed off on your job. Yes. What you say in your answer is that they signed off erroneously on the job. Well, yes. I have to take a face value they're signing off that the job was completed. And I assume you got your homeowner's insurance. Yes, I did. After he left and after you had the county sign off. Yes. Yes. Okay. But they... Now, just a second. Okay. Don't tell me a but, but. No. Now, five years later, because this was written in 2018. Correct. Five years later, you're now dating Mr. Burnley. Correct. Who's now living with you. No. Who had, well, you say you moved in in 2021. Oh, 21. Yes. I thought you yeah, who's now living yeah. with you. You began now. dating in 2018. <clears throat> That's correct. And Mr. Burnley, who is now living with you, and in 2018, you woke up one morning and said, who now has his own electrical company, woke up and said, Five years ago, Mr. Frazee's company and he did not do a professional job in my panel. And now we're dating. And now all these negative reviews come, not in 2013, when we... Sarah, you have Yelp and all those mm -hmm. things in 2013? I'm not sure if I can get back that far, but I could search. And I wasn't they, aware of Yelp. Just a, I don't care what you were aware of. Okay. You mean you woke up in 2019 and found out that you could give a star or a view? That's the first time you found that out? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Well, it's I true. just want to tell you something. I don't believe you. I don't believe that when you want to go to a restaurant, Miss Booth, and it's a new restaurant, you don't take a look on your computer and say, I wonder how many stars it got. I wonder if there are any reviews on this resort. Yes. Well, then you were smart enough to do this. My sons no. are in IT. I, so they I want to tell you something. I don't believe you. Okay. Because I'm older than you are. And I know about this, and she can tell you I'm an idiot on the machine. Well, I, so I, so I don't, I don't it. buy it, and I don't buy actually. Yeah, it is. I but can't see any honor. of her reviews. I, no, honor. but there are reviews on Yelp of his business that all are very positive. I have them if you'd like to see them. And, I will look and at them. And I have negative reviews that that says the exact same thing what Cindy posted. Just a Ooh. second. You don't understand what I'm saying to you, Mr. Burnley. I'm saying to you that it was nasty 
and malicious, because if she was unhappy with the service, it would have been posted in 2013, I did. 14, 15, 16, 17. And it wasn't until the two of you were hoochie-coochieing that all of a sudden we got negative reviews about a job they did nine years before. That's ridiculous. It's mean-spirited. Caption coming up. All those positive reviews that you posted, did any of them have to do with people that you're sleeping with? That's a question. No. No. Of course not. Of course not. I'm not that okay. kind of girl. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, John and Cynthia Frazee, Cynthia Booth, and Dwayne. The electrician John Frazee has accused his former client, Cynthia Booth, of posting damaging reviews years after the job was completed. It's mean-spirited. That's not correct. Just a sec. You say it's not correct. Well, I'm, I'm looking saying... at the timeline. I'm looking at an inspector's report right. who is a disinterested party, mm -hmm. who signed off on an electrical work. I'm listening to Mr. Burnley, who five years later did work that replaced his work from 100 amps to 200 amps with a surge protector, and all of a sudden, you start writing negative reviews about their company. That's the timeline. And if you want to try to fill me in and make me feel as if I made a mistake, I'll give you 30 seconds to okay. do it. Okay, yes. We started seeing each other in 2014. And my sons are in IT administration, and they had told me, Mom, you don't you know Don't tell me Yelp? what your sons... Don't okay. tell me what your sons okay. told me. I didn't know about Yelp or Google reviews and back, then. And back th at that time, because I'm not computer savvy. You want to know something? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Okay. I'm almost 80 years old, a lot older than you are, and I know that if I want to look something up, which I do occasionally, I look something up and I say, did so-and-so eat at this fish restaurant? It's a new place, it's a new town. I'm going to go there and take a look at it. I know how to do that. I know. And I'm an idiot, and I'm an idiot. <laughs> and if you just found it out, if you just I found did. out I'm how to do it, school. then there was no reason for your first review to be about his company. No. About a job There's that was 91 done. 91 other reviews yeah. I've posted. Just a second. Positive or negative? Positive. Are you sleeping with any other electrician? No, I'm not. Just a sec. That's the end. All those positive reviews that you posted, did any of them have to do with people that you're sleeping with? That's a question. No. No. Of course not. Of course not. I'm not that okay. kind of girl. What I'm telling you is the timeline doesn't make sense. These nasty reviews written about a job that started nine years before, in this case, six years before, now that you are sleeping with a head of an electrical company don't make sense. And my nose tells me if it doesn't make sense, it's not true. Now, when you came back a month later, what else did you do? That's it. Didn't that clean time. up a mess. At the, at Just a second. Time. Didn't clean up a mess. Yes, I cleaned up the mess. You cleaned up what my mess? My mess. He oh, doesn't your mess. clean up his mess. Well, you didn't. That's what she told you. No, I, I have other reviews of other people on the internet that I'm posted asking, that... I'm asking you a question. You didn't clean up his mess. I didn't no. clean up his mess. I right. understood you. Okay, well, that's what I I'm said. Sorry. You didn't clean up his mess. No, I cleaned up his mess. And didn't write a review. Well, I didn't know about uh, Below, I'm telling you, you can say it until the cows come that's home. I don't believe you. I don't believe you, and I don't believe that the first year that you found out to write a review is when you and Mr. Burnley started a relationship. I just don't believe it. No. And I think it's mean-spirited. You have to know, Miss Booth, I think it's mean-spirited. But we were seeing each other in 2014. You were seeing each other in 2014. Yes. You have a company, sir? Yes, do I do. Do you have a company? Yes. Are you licensed? Yes. What's the name of your company? DMB Electric Inc. Just to, would you take a look at that, Sarah? Mm -hmm. It'll be under DMB Shh. Electric Services Inc. And in what year was your company formed? Uh, this She's, one? This, this one's 2013. He had a prior Shh. one. I had a prior one. 2013? Yes, Your Honor. Was that before or after you did her job with him? Before uh, license, or after? I had the license before. No, the company. I said, was the yes, company formed? the company formed? was established. Shh, be careful, because she's a whiz with the computer. No that's, no, that's good. Was your company formed before? Yes, Your Honor. Before you did the job with him? Yes. Okay, in what month in 2013? Um, I don't know. Are you guessing? It. Yeah, I'm going to guess guessing? January. Yes. Was it before or after? You did the job with the plaintiff. 
if you don't know the answer, say, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Okay, now. The business was incorporated March 20th of 2013. Does it have any reviews? Only four from the past two years on Yelp. I'd all like, positive. By the way, did you ever write a review for him? For did you ever write a review for Mr. Burnley's company? Ah, uh, oh, it's not an answer. Did no. you ever write a review for Mr. Burnley's company? Stop shaking your head, Mr. Burnley. Did you ever write a review for Mr. Burnley's company? Uh, no. No. Okay. I don't know what it is that you didn't understand, sir. You didn't say much. You don't have to say much. I got what went on here, and I think it was mean-spirited, and you're suing for $10,000. I think that their reviews and the abuse of the critique of your business warrants the award of $10,000. You have a counterclaim. Which yes. one of you has a counterclaim? I do. Yeah, I want to tell you something. Your counterclaims dismissed. I think that you were a co-conspirator in her writing these I reviews. I not. Counterclaim is dismissed. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of ten thousand dollars. We're finished here. Thank you very much. Your Honor. This court We're done. Honor. Outside the courtroom, John, then Dwayne. During the COVID shutdown, when nobody had any work in a small community of fifty-five hundred people. That's what they chose to do. Hey, I'm glad it's behind me, man. That's all I can say. He was just getting his license, and I helped him begin his business, and this is how he serves me. Sarah and Judy. I agree with the judgment, but why $10,000? That seemed a little high for me. You can permanently hurt somebody's business, their livelihood, if you write a negative review. Because people more and more rely on the internet when they seek a service, rely on somebody else to say, I've had a good experience or I've had a bad experience. I believe, based upon the timeline that we heard, that the defendants wrote these reviews for a reason other than bad electrical work. Mm -hmm. Because if there was bad electrical work, that would have shown itself between 2000. All right. Judge Judy enters. Have a seat, please. Kevin approaches. Hello, Judge. Case 2106, Bentley versus Bentley. OK. Thank you. Welcome. Miss Bentley, this is your sister. Yes. The case is relatively simple. Your mom passed away a couple of years ago. There was a house full of furniture that belonged to your mother. According to what I've read, and this is broad strokes, according to what I read, your sister, what's your first name? Calvis. Put your mother's property in a storage unit. Excuse me, it was already in storage. Who had put it into storage? My mom put it in storage. My mom was terminally ill, and she put it in storage three months before she passed away. Is that correct? Yes. On what date did your mom pass? November the 8th, 2018. So it would have been in storage since August of 2018. Correct. From August till November, who paid for the storage unit? I have been paying it. And how much is it every month? Right now it's 209, but it was 182 in the beginning. But about $200 a month, and it's been three years. Yes, I've been paying that every month. This is what your case is about. You say that you gave your sister $900 for the purpose of traveling, getting your mother's things out of storage so that you could all disperse your mother's property. Yes, but the amount is incorrect. How, what's the amount? I gave her $800. Okay, $800. Yes. In order to get your mother's furniture to where you live uh -huh. so that you could separate the furniture and the family could take what they wanted or needed of the property, correct? That's correct. Good. Then COVID struck, your sister didn't use that money to travel, to hire truckers, to move the furniture, and you want that money back. Yes, that's correct. Th that's the whole case, okay. Just for my own information, you do expect when that furniture arrives to be one of the beneficiaries of that furniture. That's what your sister says. She says that that's the plan once it all comes back. That's not correct. I didn't want anything out of the storage but pictures. Pictures? Yeah. Well, pictures of things. Yes, that's, that's it. Pictures of what? There's a picture of me and my mother. That's all I wanted. Did you tell that to your sister? Yes, I did. Did she? No. How many sisters are there? It's only two of us now. It was four, two deceased. Did your mother have any other property? My mother has a whole two-bedroom home in the um, storage. She has furniture, everything. Other than furniture? No. Clothes, well, clothes, pictures, yes, things like that, yes. Is there any property in that storage unit that you want? Well, I'm holding her stuff because it's sentimental. I mean, I can get it, you know. I, you know, I wouldn't mind having it, but it's really... She got a lot of sentimental stuff in there, so that's why I've been... Furniture? Paying. Yes. Furniture, clothes. Furniture. Pictures, everything, you know. Okay. Yes. 
How far away is the storage unit from where you live? It's in Charlotte, North Carolina. How far away? 10 hour drive. Uh, we stay in Michigan and the storage is in North Carolina, Charlotte. Anybody that you know live there close to the storage unit? My aunt and my cousin does. And this picture that you want, do you know where it is? It's in the photo album with the rest of the pictures. And other than that one picture in a photo album, you don't want anything else, any of the other property? No. You two are the heirs, is that right? We have a brother. Does he have, as far as you know, any interest in any of your mother's property? No. When my mom passed, it was me, my niece, and my older brother there at the time of death. And so he got everything he wanted out, and he gave me the key because I was the next to older one because she wasn't there. So he was like, so y'all do what y'all want to do with it. And so that's when I told her, I'll pay it until we go get it. You said, I'll pay for the storage unit mm -hmm. until we go and get it. Yes. Okay, now I'd like you to tell me about this money that she gave you. Do you remember when she gave you the 800? She gave me the money, I want to say, May of 2020. And can you tell me what the conversation was when she gave you it the was, money? It was, here is some money to go towards going to get the things, you know. And so I told her, well, I'll find a way to go get it. I didn't ever give her a designated time, but during that time, that was COVID, so no one was able to go. And so I was going to go this year because I just signed the papers to go and go get the stuff, but no one still was able to go. She never once said that this was money loaned to go get it. She no, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. No, she oh, had yeah. designated it to right. go and get the yes. property. Yes. And you didn't use it to go and get the property. I used it towards the storage. No. I'm sorry. Go I, ahead. No. The answer no. is no. No. So that's what her complaint is, okay. that it wasn't used for its intended purpose, which was to go rent a truck, right. movers, and bring the property to yes. where you both live. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she did give you $800. Yes. Okay. And Ms. Bentley, you're prepared to sign a document that indicates that the only property you want from storage is a photograph of you and your mother that's in a photo album. Yes. That you want nothing else, that everything else belongs to either your sister or any other heirs that have a legitimate claim on any of that property, but you want nothing else. That's fine. Reasonable? Fine. Perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm entering a judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $800 with the proviso that the plaintiff will, in fact, sign that document indicating she wants nothing but one photograph from the storage unit. I gave her 150 back. Did she give you 150 back? She did give me 150 oh, okay. back. You paid her back. So she goes you 650. Mm -hmm. Judgment for the plaintiff, 650. Thank you very much. Thank you. This court is adjourned. Shatanya. It, it was my mother's stuff. I just was trying to get the stuff. It was in storage for long enough. We haven't talked in a whole year. We're not close. You know, all she wanted is a picture. I give her a picture. At least I got what I wanted. We still sisters, still love her. In Chambers, Judy and Sarah. Those look like two nice sisters. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that problem is the intervention of COVID, which really turned everybody's life upside down. Especially family units. Family units, because I think that that was the intention, that she was going to pay for it mm -hmm. to all be brought up, use that money, and then they would go through the property and decide who wanted what and what would be disposed of. It's not an egregious case of misappropriation of funds. All well-intentioned, I think. Well-intentioned. I thought it was a sweet case. Kevin. Case 2111, Banks versus Mitchell. All parties, please step forward. Queen Vanessa Banks is suing her former friend, Fulton Mitchell, for an unpaid loan and stolen money. Miss Banks, what kind of work do you do? I'm a city contractor for the city and county of San Francisco. How long have you been working for the city of San Francisco? 30 years. You a full-time employee? No, I'm a contractor, so I'm used as needed. Well, in the last month, how many days have you worked? like around 40 hours the whole month. How do you support yourself? I'm on disability. How long have you been on disability? Since roughly like around February of 2022. When you applied for disability, were you originally rejected or did they accept your claim? I was rejected three times, actually. So when you started collecting in February of 2022, you got a big check for back disability. Yes, ma'am. I know my business. How much of a check did you get? I got um, think... 7000 the first time, and they just submitted me like 8000 a month or two ago, and then there are some more coming, and they all came yet. Mm -hmm. They advised you, because you were rejected, as you said, two or three times, that there would be a total amount coming to you. You got a letter from the administration. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And what is the total amount that they told you you would be receiving in increments? 
think it was like 18000 And you had a lawyer at the appeal? Yes, ma'am. Now, when you applied for disability, did you say that there was no kind of work that you could do? Caption, coming up. I'm jaundiced. I know that people put money in somebody else's bank when they want to hide it from the government, creditors, a spouse looking for support, all what I would call nefarious reasons to put money in somebody else's bank. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Queen and Fulton. Queen Vanessa Banks claims her former friend, Fulton Mitchell, stole money from their shared bank account. Now, when you applied for disability, did you say that there was no kind of work that you could do? Well, actually... No, no, not actually. They're giving you $18,000. They said that they should have taken your case when you first applied for disability. So they had to have found that you could not hold gainful employment. That's what it's all about, when you get federal disability. Right. Right. So I want to know what this 40 hours a month that you worked last month as an independent contractor, what kind of independent contractor were you? I actually sit on Zooms, and I am a consultant, so I'm, I'm on Zooms most of the time. And when you're not on Zooms, where are you? At home. What do you consult about? I am an urban consultant, so I work with various people that's trying to find out about urban living and mental health, basically working around mental health. How are you paid? They might mail no, a check. No, not might. They mail a check. What do you do with that check? I usually cash it at a... A store in the community. You cash it. What is your hourly wage? As a consultant? Yeah. I'm usually paid like one thirty an uh, hour. And what's the amount of money you get yeah. from disability a month, not counting these extra payments for when they denied you disability? A thousand dollars. So you get a thousand dollars a month plus a hundred and thirty dollars an hour times the last month you said was forty hours. So you make Four five thousand dollars a month from your consulting job for the city. No way. Well, am I correct, Whitney, that Miss Banks said that she worked about forty hours last month? Can I explain something? Not no. all. No. She said around forty hours the whole month. Okay. Would you tell me what she says she earns an hour? It's usually one hundred thirty an hour. Fifty two hundred dollars. And when you get the checks for these consulting things, you take them and you cash them. That's yes, either a yes or a no. Do you work as a sole independent contractor or do you have an LLC or a corporation? No, ma'am. So the checks are made out to you? Yes, ma'am. As an independent contractor? Yes, ma'am. You have to pay your own taxes, so you're 1099 from all these people? Yes, ma'am. What did you declare on your taxes last year? I didn't file taxes last year, ma'am. Why not? You said you've been working in this capacity on and off for 30 years. Because for the city. where I come from, a lot of the work is volunteer work considered. And you are given a stipend. And some of the work I do, sometimes I don't even get paid, but I still do I'm the not, work. Listen, you know exactly where I'm going. We're two savvy people. When you cash those checks, because this is what the case is about, for some reason, because I'm trying to figure out why somebody puts money into somebody else's bank account. Because part of this case is about that. You and Mr. Mitchell became friends, maybe a little bit more than friends, I don't know. At some point, according to you, you gave him money to hold in his bank account because his bank account was closer to where you are and you didn't want to go on two buses to where your bank was. Am I getting that right? Is that no, what you... No, no, ma'am. Let's see. I'm telling you why I made these inquiries to you. I was struggling to find a way to get access to my money. I always took the bus to the bank, but during COVID, public transportation shut down or was completely unreliable, and I was in a bind. This is what you write. When Fulton heard about my problem, he offered to hold my money for me in his bank. He said that he didn't keep any money in that account, so it would be perfect, because his bank was right where I worked. I only know of several reasons why strangers put money in somebody else's account. You know, I may have an account with Sarah. I may have an account with one of my other grandchildren. I have an account with my husband. But I've had a best friend for 70 years, another best friend for 30 years, 
And I would never think of putting money in their bank account because there are banks all over the place. I'm just telling you, you know, I'm jaundiced. I know that people put money in somebody else's bank when they want to hide it, when they want to hide it from the government, creditors, a spouse looking for support, a spouse looking for alimony, a contractor who has a judgment against them, all what I would call nefarious reasons to put money in somebody else's bank. But let us say that you did put money in this bank account, and you say that money was withdrawn. Your money was withdrawn from that account to pay his taxes. Is that what you're alleging? Yes, ma'am. OK. How much was withdrawn from his account that only his name was on? Or was your name on it, too? My name was on it, too. Oh, there we go. Now, I can understand it, why you might owe taxes. I don't know anything about his business, but I can certainly understand that you might. Did you receive notice that the IRS took money out of this bank account, which was then a joint bank account? You no, know, I did not. So if her name was on it, it was a joint account. Uh, it was not. It was my account, and I added her name to my That's account. OK. That makes it a joint account. Yes. OK, well, I didn't have that information in here, because joint accounts is absolutely different. Joint account means that the money belongs to both of you. Now, what makes you think that the money that was taken out of the account was to pay his taxes? Because I have proof. Your I'd Honor. like to see it. Queen hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. She reviews it. What account is this? Whose money is that? Mine. Explain that to me. This is a deposit here for $900. $88.68. What is that? That's when the pandemic hit and the struggle started getting hard trying to get money. And being that me and him was business partners, that's when he decided to try to help me out. You know, I neither have the time or the interest to hear about the nuances of this stuff because I don't have the wherewithal, either emotionally or structurally, to figure out the whole scam. I haven't figured it all out yet, but I'm beginning to figure it out. So you deposited 988 and then withdrew at some point in May. That was on June 9th. I don't have the rest of it here, but you withdrew $1,600 from that account on May 25th. Do you remember what that was for? The 60 May 25th? Yeah, May 25th, $1,600, June 3rd, tax levy, 2711. The May 25th is because that's my daughter's birthday, and I spent time with my daughter. And then the June 3rd tax levy is why I'm here with you today. What kind of business were you in together with the defendant? You want me to what? answer that? No, you answer it. What kind what of... type of business were you together? He works for the city and county. I'm a grassroots organizer, so I work within his organization so that we that's can do things together. That's not true. Your Honor, I have proof. I do work with his organization. I'm putting on a Just Halloween a event. I don't, I don't care. Logo let, let, let's there. understand each other. I don't care because something doesn't smell right for me. And if something doesn't smell right with this nose, it's usually accurate. Usually. Caption coming up. You said you took out $1,000. When and for what purpose? I took out the $1,000 and I gave it to Ms. Banks. That's not what you said. What did I say, Mr. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you said. It's not what you swore to. Queen grins. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Queen and Fulton. Queen Vanessa Banks is suing her former friend, Fulton Mitchell, for an unpaid loan and stolen money. When someone puts money in somebody else's bank account, it's because they're trying to somehow shield that money from some sort of scrutiny. If your only source of income, which you would like me to believe, is this $1,000 from disability and the $18,000 that you're going to get for retroactive she disability. Some, she was on some other kind of services also. I don't know whether it was SSI or something. When she first came to me, she wanted me to, to hold the money and put it in my account because she didn't want it to mess up That's her money. That's not true. That's not true, Your Honor. He started helping me in 2019, 
in 2020, he asked me for a loan to help one of his daughters of $1,900. We were both trying to start up a business. We didn't know the pandemic was going to come, Your Honor. We was trying to start up a business. I've never tried Men, to start up a business. Just a second. Your Honor, I got proof, because he lying to you. Just, no, just a second. I don't care that you were starting a business. So we was... It doesn't make any difference to me. It really doesn't make any difference to me. You had a joint account, and the IRS took money out of that joint account. Was that your tax debt? I don't it, know. You, the answer is you don't know. I, I, it's... Okay, well, this says that it was the levy from California Franchise Tax Board was against Fulton W. Mitchell. That's me. Th that's what it's... I asked her to show me that. I said, prove it oh. to me. No, she never showed yeah. me that ever. Okay. So my question to you is, sir, because, of course, you have to pay your own taxes. Yes, ma'am. Right? You would acknowledge that this bank account had only her funds in it? No, it had my funds in there, too. Show me any deposits that you made into this account. Well, I had money in there way before I put her money into my account. It's been in my account for over 10, 15 years. What I want to see, Mr. Fulton... Yes. ...is any place where you deposited 2711, because that's what they took out. No, I didn't deposit 2711 into that account. Ever? No. Okay, good. This responsibility is yours. You would acknowledge that yes. it's yours? Yes. Okay, so that's $2,700, which you, in fact, owe her. She probably owes IRS or the state of California more money because I'm not sure that they know where all this money is going. Did you take any other money out of that account? No, ma'am. Yes, you did. You took out $1,000. You acknowledged well, you took out $1,000 by accident, you said, sir, and you said you paid it back. She got it back. Okay, well, that's then don't true, say... Honor. Shh, don't speak. You got into enough trouble, right, so far? You said you took out $1,000. When and for what purpose? I took out the $1,000 and I gave it to Ms. Banks. That's not what you said. What did I say, um, Ms. Jones? <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you said. It's not what you swore to. You said, there was a time when I accidentally withdrew $1,000 from the account that belonged to Vanessa, but I paid her back in June 2022. There you go. I said, what do you mean, there you go? I said, when did you take money out of her account? That was the only time I took the money out. Well, tell me about it. Vanessa started harassing me. She started showing up to my job and just doing all kind of stuff. So I was just trying to get rid of her. And? I, so I took the money out and gave it to her. And I'm... Just a second. Put your hand down. Don't you understand what you signed? Yeah. You said, I accidentally took money out of her account, but then I gave it back to her. Because if you accidentally took it out, it means it didn't belong to you. When did you accidentally take it out, and when did you give it back to her? I took out the money, and the money was given to her. That was it. I didn't... I, that was it. I was done with it. Well, I was done with her. I was done with, with all of it. There was a time when I accidentally withdrew $1,000 from the account that belonged to Vanessa, but I paid that back that, in June 2022. Those words are, are, are mixed up a little bit there. That's what I read. That's your answer, sir. As for the rest of the money she claims I owe her, it's all a bunch of lies. I never took a $1,900 loan and don't owe money for the IRS. Well, you do owe money for the IRS because one of the things yeah. I think that everybody has to pay is their own tax levy and their own child support. You would acknowledge that. I agree. Okay, tell me about this loan of $1,900, Ms. Banks. Mr. Mitchell had fell into a lot of hardship in the pandemic, and he came to me and asked me, could I loan him $1,900 to help out one of his daughters? And I gave it to him, and he agreed to pay it back, and we was just, like, trying to have no business together, so... And I thought he was a friend. Show me proof that you gave him $1,900. It was cash, Your Honor. The $1,000 he said he handed me back in June, that was from right. the 1900 I'm not following you, madam. Are you saying that he in total owed you, forget the IRS, $2,900, $1,000 that he took in 19? He asked for $1,900 cash. Never asked for $1,900. I gave him $1,900 in cash. Not true. Then he paid me back 1000 in June of 2022. Okay. If you have money in my account, why would I ask you for $1,900? I would just go in there and grab it. That makes no sense. Oh, just a second. Why are you talking to her? I'm sorry. Where do you think you are? I'm sorry. I apologize. She's never given me no $1,900. She's never given me anything in cash, period, ever. I have proof. I'm willing to look at yes. it. Yes. I told him that I needed to move forward with it, and if he don't give me what I need, I put it in writing. So well, you may put it in writing. Well, you sent this to him. And it says acknowledgement of monetary debt in the amount of $4,600. You typed this up, and he never signed it. 
No, he no. never signed it. Yeah. Well, then it's meaningless. You can type up anything. I can type up something that says I own all of Sarah's real estate. If she doesn't sign it, I don't own anything. Well, that's what okay. $1,000 came from, because he was trying to cover that. Yeah. You know, somehow I think I'm dealing with, I'm not sure about one or two people who've managed to master the system. And no, not also, no, I've never, well, I don't know. I've never I don't know. All I know is if somebody is working, five years just a second, hey, County. just a second. There's a reason why she asked to be added to your bank account. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You don't look, because if you're a foolish man, what was the reason she gave you for wanting to have a bank account where you were the primary on that bank account? What was the reason she gave you? She gave me the reason that she didn't want it to mess up her income. That's not true. Just a second. So she said, I don't want it to mess. She said she didn't want to put it in her name because she didn't want to mess up her income that she had coming in. Her income from what? Some kind of assistance. I'm not sure exactly yeah. what it was. Whatever. Anyway, got a nice windfall, $18,000. By the way, I have one other question for you. In your complaint, which you read and signed and swore to, Fulton heard about my problems with money and where to put it, and he offered to hold my money in his account. He said he doesn't keep any money in there, so it would be perfect, because his bank was right where I worked. Where was his bank and where do you work? I work, I work in the community that I was born and raised in, which is Bayview. Okay, I'm not going to get a straight answer. You owe her for her tax debt. Nothing else. $2,700. This court is adjourned. That's it. You're done. I'll watch her, like, every day. Um, it was fair. I'm thankful that she saw what it was for what it was. You know, she asked me to put some money in account for her. I did. I never had to harass him. We were business partners for three, two or three years. I don't know if it was a business agreement or not. Because I told him I want my money. I'm just happy it's over with. You know what I was thinking about? I was thinking that I wouldn't have had that.
false allegations, debit card charges, and personal belongings. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Kevin. Case 2131, Gutierrez versus George. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Gutierrez, this is your mother. Yes, ma'am. And who is this? My grandmother. And that's your daughter? Yes. I'm reading the complaint and the answer, and this is what your complaint is about. You claim that your mother had you falsely arrested, as a result of which you spent four months in jail. While you were in jail, it is your claim that your mother used a debit card of yours, I think $3,000 worth, and you had some belongings at her house that you want. I gather that you've had some problems in your own life. You have at least three children. Yes. Was the state ever involved in placing the children in foster care? No. And what about your daughter? My daughter, yes. And how old is your daughter? She's 19 months. At what point did the state become involved with your daughter? In May of this year, May 18th of this year, when there was false allegations made against... Well, when my mom refused to give me my daughter back. In May, when you brought your daughter to your mother's house, when? I called my brother on May 17th of 2022, and I asked him to babysit my daughter. Your brother. And does your brother live with your mother? Yes, he was staying with her at that time. So on the 17th, you asked your brother, who was staying with your mother, if he would babysit for your daughter. Where were you going? I was needing to go to Fresno, and I had just received my income tax check. So I needed to go to Fresno, and I was on foot because my car was impounded the day prior. Were you going alone? To Fresno, yes. So you brought your daughter on the 17th of May to your mother's house, and your brother was supposed to watch him, according to you, while you went to Fresno. Watch, yeah, he met me down the street, actually, because there's a restraining order, so I didn't actually go to the resident. Who has a restraining order? My mother has a restraining order on me. Is the restraining order that she has against you a final order or a temporary order? It's good for three years. That's all I know. That's a final order. Was that a final order of protection after a trial, or did you consent to it? I was not notified of the court date. I... No, I was, didn't consent to anything. OK, so it was a default. I don't know what that means. It means you didn't show up, and they entered a final order of protection in favor of your mother. So you're not permitted to go to her home. Right. Since that's not really the subject of this, I don't have to get into it. In any event, you went on the 17th, you dropped your child off at your mother's house, your brother was there, and then what happened? I finally got to Fresno, I got a ride, I got to the check cashing place, it literally took me... Don't tell me, I'm not interested in that. 17th, you dropped the child off. You were supposed to pick the child up when? That evening. On the 17th? Yes. And did you? I showed up about... It was a little before 10. I showed up, I called my brother, I said, I'm down the street. He was like, yeah, I'll be right there. 10 o'clock at night? It was almost... Ma'am, I was on foot, and... I was just... I asked you, 10 o'clock at night? It was right before 10, yes. OK. When I got there, I called him. It had been about 15 minutes had gone by, and I called him back, and I said, where are you at? And he said, Mom won't let me leave with the baby. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, Mom won't let me leave with the baby. My mother instinct kicked in, and I went in, like, fight or flight. And I walked down to my mom's house, and I knocked on the door and was asking for my daughter. I finally came to my... Oh. OK. So when your brother said that to you, instead of going to the police, you violated the order of protection. I ended under... up leaving and calling the sheriff. OK. But you didn't. You went... Of so course, you, yes. you went I to... was going for my daughter. Yes, ma'am. OK. And what happened at 10 o'clock at night or 10.30? Uh, yes. I finally realized that about five minutes of being at the house, I was like, OK, you need to leave. So I left, because she wouldn't open the door to give me my daughter. I left. I called the sheriff. And so I told them the situation. So they had walked down to my mother's and let her know that what she was doing was basically... No, they... don't not what she was doing. The police came And told her with that they you. could arrest her. Good and told oh. her that if she did not, that she needed to give my daughter back. But because it was late, the baby was already asleep, and so the, the cops that came down, back down to me, and they said, look, we don't, because they knew me. Whatever. I'm allowing you to give me a certain amount of hearsay so that I can make this story make sense. Oh, okay. Do you understand? But don't tell me, because they knew you, what they thought, Yes, ma'am. You were told to come back in the morning. Yeah, the agreement was, was that, uh, between my mom and the sheriff, was that I could pick up Malia in the morning. The sheriff told me to call before 6 o'clock in the morning, before he got off his shift, and that he would come back out and do another standby. The next morning came. Between me and my grandma, I had us call my mom. And no, no, just a second. What does that mean between you and your grandma? Your agreement was you were supposed to call the sheriff. The sheriff, I according call, to you, I, before I 6. I my grandma. No, not the grandma. The agreement was you weren't supposed to call your grandma. You were supposed to call right, the sheriff. Right, but I sheriff. needed a ride. 
I needed a ride. So I called my grandma to have her come pick me up. Just a sec, where were you? I was staying at a friend's house. I didn't oh, well, just, a sec. just a sec. You were staying at what friend's house? Kimberly Smirks. Caption coming up. The sheriff came, got behind us, and tried to like pin us in, and my grandma went to take off. So your grandmother was driving. Yes, ma'am. And she was trying to evade the police to go someplace else. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Kimberly and Rhonda. Kimberly Gutierrez claims her mother, Rhonda George, owes for debit card charges and personal belongings. You were staying at what friend's house? My friend Isaiah's. Isaiah? Yes, I stayed the night there waiting for my daughter. To Just a tomorrow. second, Isaiah, Isaiah what? Bonilla. And what is your relationship He's with him? He's my best friend. He's been my best friend since high school. Where are you living now? I live with my grandmother right now, since I was uh, released. Full time? Right now, yes. What do you mean right now, yes? I'm in the process of getting my own place. Okay, so you called your grandmother and then? Called the sheriff. And then? Waited for the sheriff to respond. And then? The sheriff did not respond for a few hours. Okay, so you were waiting for the sheriff to respond. The sheriff did not respond until when? It was after 7 o'clock in the morning, and it wasn't seven, even the sh Yes, ma'am, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Your daughter is, according to you, 19 months old? 19 months old. And she had prior to that been living with you? Yeah, she was living with me all the time, yes. She was living with you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now let's get back to this arrest that you had. According to your papers, your daughter was with you up until that time. What time did she wake up in the morning? Uh, usually she wakes up between 7.30 and 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, well, then could you tell me why, if she wakes up between 7.30 and 8, why you would even contemplate picking her up before 8 o'clock in the morning? Because one of my issues was with certain officers that would have been responding, and the officer that responded the night of the incident, he told me, if you wanted me to be the officer to respond, you need to call me before I get off my shift. Fine, but he didn't respond to you. But according to no. you, he didn't respond to you. No, it was so a different So my officer. question to you they is... They did respond if you're... at 7 o'clock in the morning. And did what? It was a horrible mess. Well, he did what? They responded. When they responded, he showed up. The officer told me that he did not want to be there. He said, if I have my way, you'll never see your daughter again. And I looked at him, and I said, wow, okay. What do you mean you looked at him? Where were you like, when you looked at him? I was right next to him, but I just... Where, at the precinct or at your no, house? At, no, down the street from my mom's. Okay, so he responded to you when you were down the street at your mother's house, and he said, I'm not getting involved in this, and if I had my way, you would never have your daughter. And so what did you do? So at that point, my grandma pulled up, and I told him, I said, your assistance is no longer needed, and that uh, my grandma could just get my daughter. And he says, well, you already called me. The deputy did. So I said, okay, whatever. He asked me if I had somewhere to live, and I said yes, and whatever. And so he went down to my mom's. When he went down to my mom's, he was supposed to just go down there and get my daughter. When he was taking too long, I could walk so, so far this way, and I could see straight down my mom's street. So I did. When I did, I see that my mom was out there just giving him an earful. I know this woman very well, okay? So I just imagined what was being said about me. Well, I guess the back door is screwed and nailed shut at the house. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's okay. not important. Yeah. So anyways, my best friend went over the back fence. What do you mean your best friend? Isaiah Bonilla. Oh, so you brought Isaiah with you? He went... Just a second. So you have your grandmother, and then you've got Isaiah, your best friend, also to go to your mother's house. Yes, ma'am. He got and my daughter. Isaiah brought her to where you were. Yes. And then what happened? I started walking back towards Isaiah's house. Uh, when I started walking back towards Isaiah's house, my grandma pulled up in her car, and she was like, are you ready to go get your car out of the impound lot? And I said, yeah, I'm ready. And so I got in her back seat with my daughter. When I got in the back seat, I got in the middle. Well, then she was like, well, I don't know what's going to happen. Your mom's over there saying a whole bunch of stuff to the deputies, so I don't know what's going to happen. And so I was like, well, I got to go get my stuff from Isaiah's. So I go to jump back out the car. As I go to jump back out the car... But it just suck. Now you have your daughter. Because I needed my wallet. My bag was at Isaiah's. My purse and everything was at Isaiah's. I went to go, I was gonna go back and pick it up. Well, right when we were gonna go back, the sheriff came, got behind us, and tried to like pin us in, and my grandma went to take off. So your grandmother was driving. Yes, ma'am. And she was trying to evade the police to go someplace else. Yes, ma'am. And how many police cars were involved? When? Were there ever any more than one police car? Once we got to the police department, of course, there's a police department. 
No, I'm talking about the number of police cars. So there's a police car oh, now. Oh, coming behind us? No. It was just one. It was just one? Yes, ma'am. And you were accelerating no. to get there? Was the police car siren on? To no. Set? Well, how did you know that he was trying to pull you over? Because he tried to hit her car. Oh, that would give you a clue. So you're telling me he tried to hit your grandmother's car without notifying you in any way to pull over? Yes, ma'am. That's why I spent four Just months in jail and I beat my case. I went to trial and beat my case. Everything was dismissed. I'm not responsible for the criminal justice system. I'm only responsible for what goes on here. Yes, ma'am. So I assume once you got to the police station, both you and your grandmother were arrested? Yes, ma'am. And that was in May? Yes, ma'am. And now we're... Uncross your arms. And now we're in December. Yes, ma'am. Of the same year. Yes, ma'am. And you're out of jail. Yes, ma'am. And you've been out of jail for about since August 25th. Who does your daughter live with? Right now, she um, she's with the mentor. She's my ex-husband's aunt, ma'am. And who placed her with your ex-husband's aunt? I did. Not the court. No, I requested her. Does the child's great aunt have guardianship? No, custody? I'm I'm getting my daughter back, ma'am. But for the last three months, she's been with this aunt. Right, because Child Protective Services did get involved, and Child Protective Services, I've been doing everything that... Well, that's what I asked you. I asked you whether Child Protective Services... Child Protective were involved Services did get involved with my daughter, yes. Did. That's what I assumed. And I've been drug testing, I've been Just doing... Just a second. Yes, ma'am. That's what I assumed, that Child Protective Services was involved. And so if Child Protective Services are involved, then they are overseeing the child's placement with the aunt. You have an ongoing case. Yes, ma'am. Probate court. No, not probate. Which one? Family court? Family court, yes. When was the case opened with regard to your daughter in the family May court? May 18th, the day I got arrested, ma'am. And that child became involved with the foster care system in May. Okay, so your grandmother also spent a little time in jail. How much? Two weeks. I quite frankly don't understand your case. While I was in jail, Your Honor, while I was incarcerated, my mom had all my, my debit cards, my ID. She had went and actually, because of me getting arrested, she had went to Isaiah's and picked up all of my stuff. You mean, so... just a sec, just a sec. Let me understand this. It is your claim that the reason that you had to go to Isaiah's house was to get your pocketbook, your wallet, your credit card that you, left just, that you left there. But I never made it there. I understand that. And Isaiah, clearly, from what you tell me, knew of the problem because he was part of this little Ordeal. conspiracy to get your daughter out of the house and was at the back of the house to pick up your daughter, who was being put over the fence. So why would Isaiah give your mother... Because she went over there with a baseball bat and busted out his windows. Caption, coming up. On February 4th this year, I had... Kimberly's eyes filled with tears. I lost my twins, okay? And that was the first time I had contacted my mother because I was going through it and I messaged her and I told her, I said, I really need my mom right now. If anything, I need my mom right now. A wide-eyed Rhonda shakes her head. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Kimberly and Rhonda. Kimberly Gutierrez is accusing her mother, Rhonda George, of wrongfully using her debit card and keeping her belongings. So why would Isaiah give your mother... Because she went over there with a baseball bat and busted out his windows. And the reason why all of my things were at my mother's was because I hadn't lived at my mom's for over a year. What your case is about... Is my belongings... Your, is you claim that your mother went over and got your wallet from Isaiah's because I asked you what you were doing here. I certainly am not looking into the allegations of false arrest. It sounds as if you did the absolute wrong thing in trying to regain your daughter, whose custody, actually, you lost at a dispositional hearing and was determined to be a dependent child and placed in foster care. That's what happened here. Right. Okay, so I'm not even addressing your claims of false arrest. Okay, what so you did was actually the, the wrong thing. I said, so what are you suing for? Now, my, you said your... My you're... belongings, okay. my, my what? money. Just a second. What money? She used my... CalFresh, which is my EBT food stamps, and my CalWorks, which is my cash aid through the welfare department. Just a second. So you're suing her for taking your food stamps and your welfare check. Right. Just a second. Your food stamps and your welfare check. And this is the statement from my tax return of all the money that was on there. On where? On my debit card. It had over $3,000 on it, and I marked what was used when after she had picked it up. 
And then these are receipts from some of my belongings that was at her house. Just a second. You haven't lived in your mother's house for... I moved Shh. back to my mother's in the Just beginning. a second. Yes, ma'am. You hadn't lived in your mother's house, according to what you said to me. Whitney, was it a year ago? Didn't you say that you moved out of my your mother? My mom allowed me to come back. Because there was an order of protection. She had called me. I was living in Fresno, ma'am. Just a second. You hadn't lived in your mother's house. You said you were living with your grandmother. For how long were you living with your grandmother before I May? I I was living with my grandmother right now. I was living in Fresno, ma'am. I want to know what property you think... My clothing, my husband's clothing, my, my daughter's bassinet. I had jewelry there. I had uh, all of my clothing. Why would all of your clothing be there? You were living with your grandmother. I hadn't moved into my grandmother's until I got out of jail. I was living in Fresno, Fresno. and my mom... Shh, just a sec. You're not Is letting that me what... talk. I, I just... I'm not understanding your movements. Okay, my mom kicked me out in 2021, okay? My daughter was just a few weeks old. My mom kicked me out due to her boyfriend. She kicked you out? Yes. And? When she kicked me out, I went through Marjorie Mason, and Marjorie Mason had placed me in hotels. I was placed in hotels for about three or four months, okay? And then it was about January of 21, I was at this time, I was pregnant with twins. They had genetic defects. On February 4th this year, I had, I lost my twins, okay? And that was the first time I had contacted my mother because I was going through it and I messaged her and I told her, I said, I really need my mom right now. If anything, I need my mom right now. My daughter, had, she had never, had not seen my daughter. She was not a part of my daughter's life. I did not speak to my mother, nothing. So she made an agreement that she would watch my daughter, because I had to go to San Francisco, because I was too far along in my pregnancy, and it was just a big old mess. Do you have any of your daughter's property? No. Okay, now, let's talk about this card. Did you pick up her property from Isaiah? When? That's either a yes or a no, after the 18th of May. Well, how do I answer that when I did pick up her property, but her cards were not in there? Her driver's license wasn't in there. Her food stamp card wasn't what were you in there. Doing, what were you doing at Isaiah's? So she asked... Was this when she was in jail? Yes, right after she got arrested. So I went down there. No problem, he handed it right to me. Look in my wallet, make sure everything's in there. Like I said, her I don't know if it was her driver's license or ID was missing, her food stamp card, and the other card, the bank card. I don't know how to get proof but her best friend, he cash dabbed everybody money. There was a bunch of I, people. I have even himself. Information right here. Even himself and his girlfriend. Did and you, I don't want to get into the I, whole I don't want to get into it either. It's far too complicated for me. Is what you're telling me that you never used a card that she had? No, I didn't. Because I'm not concerned about food stamps. Or no, welfare. I did not. Suing the wrong person. You were in jail, so you didn't need money from welfare. What proof do you have that I have your... I have my bank statements. What proof do you have that your mother withdrew money? What... She was the one that went and picked up my cards. Oh, I don't know that. That's not what she says, and you have no proof. Isaiah's not here, correct? No. I don't doubt you when you say that somebody used your card. I just need proof my to mother, show... My mother, I know that she was supposed to get my daughter from CPS. She was supposed to go get a crib with my card. And I have the... <laughs> where she, And my grandma can... can. I just want you to show yes, me... Yes, ma'am. No, no, no. That oh. your mother... I believe that people used your card. I she need, used my card. No, I don't know that. I need you to show me proof that your mother... How am I supposed the, to show? I have the, I, my bank statements. Well, then I'll take a look at your bank statement. If your bank statement tells me who used your card, then that's an easy. She said she did not. I just want you to show me proof that any of these were used. I mean, we have a lot of PlayStations, DoorDash, Amazon yeah. Marketplace. And all I of those. up throughout the whole time. Shh. I understand that. I suggest that you concentrate on getting yourself together. If you want to reunite your family, I suggest that you put your priorities in order. Oh, they are in order. Evidently not. I work, I have a job, I go to school, I'm getting my own place, but I'm going to court, I'm getting my kids back. Good. Can I give you this? I don't know what it is. Well, I just want you to look at it. Can I see it? Rhonda hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. She reviews it. You're telling me is this is part of your daughter's criminal history? What is this? No, I'm for? just showing you. She just got out of jail just a couple of days ago. 
They haven't picked up charges, Your Honor. You were arrested on November 28th? Yes. I'm not going to let you tell me about this. You have a lawyer? Yes. As I said, Ms. Gutierrez, if you're trying to work to get your family back together... Yes, ma'am. ...and your kids back together... Yes, ma'am. ...would be a good idea to think about having more children until you get these children back under your roof. We're done here. Your case is dismissed. You have a good day. This court is adjourned. Outside the courtroom, Rhonda 